Hello, everyone, and welcome to, no, it's not Low Inc., it's Ladder Inc. here on IPL. I am DRF bringing you in to this special edition of Low Inc. Joining me as my co-commentator, please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Jorian. Uh, you might have saw me previously before a couple times, but do you have you? You actually never been here for a while for Low Day Low Inc. or anything uh, IPL passing it for you <laughs> um i mean it's it's been a hot minute uh I, you know I, i'm usually here to open up low wings uh the past few months so uh you know it's it's nice to be back to open up ladder inc <laughs> after what has been a a crazy day already to just figure out schedules and uh, having a couple of looty moments uh as the kids will say <laughs> Oh yeah, 100%, but like saying about looting moments for sure, there's going to be a lot of looting matches going to be happening tonight, most likely maybe against Super Team 5 and Clanfishers, maybe who <laughs> might be in low wink right now and maybe scheduling for their own brackets later tonight because of scheduling hell. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you know that's probably the case. Uh, yeah, Super Team 5 and Clam Fisher is going to be kicking us off in this special edition of Low Ink. Super Team 5, uh, I'm pretty sure we've seen a fair bit of them in previous uh, Low Inks as well. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think they made a, uh, a decent run last month, but uh, I would have to check the records on that. Uh, but both of these teams are almost ready uh, as we are going to be getting geared up for game number one. It will be Splat Zones on Museum de Alfonsino. Uh, and with the uh, timer on our end ticking down, uh, we're going to be jumping right into game number one, Jorian. So yeah. let's go ahead and load on in and we will take a look at these compositions. Okay, so for the composition, for, that's going to be uh, Clam. The clan fishes on the teal and for super t5 on the pink and it looks like these cons oh my gosh that's triple t that's triple trial shot on super team 5 and for clan fishes that's going to be a sniper fact which is going to be interesting yeah and also the dread ringer like i i did not know that we we allowed this weapon in competitive splatoon this <laughs> this is a special treat here as we do see Super Team 5 are going to be taking early control here. A nice shot from Nazuka as well. And to me right now, it seems that this Clam Fishers team is entirely staggered at this stage. It definitely does look that, but for the but for the say in the dread we for Metcock, Super Team on the side Super Team Five, they really have been pushing that ever since like a couple of weeks ago actually from what I know. But we see mm. from right now with the T Tech player most you no, know, that's gonna be Chopper on the side of Super Team Five. Just gonna play defense on the zone. But we see a Zepcaster coming out and there's an easy Welcome to the Thunder fellas. <laughs> <laughs> but because oh. because of the DC, this oh my god, what's happening? Wait, oh my god, it's Flatfest! No. It's Flatfest! It's the curse! It's that <laughs> good is happening! Oh <laughs> my god, let, let it be, it's a 3v1, the score does count! Oh, what? <laughs> Wait, what? Did they just call off the map? <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> welcome to Lottery, everybody! <laughs> <laughs> We're getting things kicked off with a bang, as I don't know what happened. I mean, it just it started with a member of Super Team 5 and just completely spiraled out of control. <laughs> um... <laughs> Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if those were like purposeful DCs or if there's some uh, greater disconnect happening because uh, it seemed like Super Team 5 had stopped so I don't know if that was just Clam Fishers saying hey you know this game doesn't really mean much we're gonna go ahead and, ahead and restart it uh, I, I don't know that <laughs> we uh. <laughs> Who oh knows? My. Who knows? Oh my god. <laughs> but, okay, so, but the thing is for, you know, Super Team 5 with the DC happening, I Again, the rules apply. The win does go to Super Team 5 because it got past the threshold of under 50. But for Clamfishers, I don't know what, what even happened. Again, the host from what we see is Clamfishers, so it could be a host issue, but it, it's depending on what happens. But I, from myself, playing it fast like 20 minutes ago, I did get a DC out of nowhere. So it could be that situation, just 
the server is going to dust because again it happens every splat fast like every low ink there's always have to be a dc it's the like momentum it's the sentimental thing <sighs> Yeah, I, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out exactly like <laughs> what happened. Sorry, because uh, I was like, you know, let me double check these DC rules because like maybe we missed something. Um, so so just just to be clear on what the uh, the DC rules specifically state, uh, each team is allowed one DC per match or round. Um, then handling disconnects in a game uh, unless less than two and a half minutes remain in a match or a team is less than 50 units away to a KO, the match can be replayed. So given that it's saying that it is a team, I'm, I, I'm with you, Dorian. I think that this means that the match in theory should count. Yes. Uh, but of course, that's not our discretion. So we'll wait for the, the TO ruling on that one just to make sure um, before we proceed on, uh, either back into the same game or move on forward. Uh, yeah. But but that was, that, was, that was quite the opening moment. I don't think I've experienced anything quite like that in the uh, many low inks <laughs> that uh, I have covered in my time here. Um, so uh, yeah, that, that was certainly an all-time start. <laughs> yeah, basically, hopefully, please someone, please tell me someone clipped that and it's someone close to clip on Twitter. Like that, that's the weird moment that we have to say clipped and that's going to be welcome to Ladder Wing. But at the same yeah. time too, at the same time too, this reminds me of the incident back in like November of 2020 when that, when the whole TTT happened because they need to go to sleep in European. Oh Time gosh! <laughs> yeah, this is the same incident. <laughs> this just replaces uh, it. Honestly, it's, it, it, it is a full circle moment. We 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 can end low weeks like this. We can also start them like this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh. So so uh, at least our word is indicating that yes, that game has counted. Um. So we are gonna go ahead and. Proceed with the match uh, going over to game number two, which will be Clamblets on Barnacle and Dime. Uh, so given that this is a lot of format, uh, we're, we're, it's kind of picks all the way, baby. Like, I mean, that that's one of, in my opinion, one of the fun things that you get here. Hmm. Again, to talk about the rules real quick before we go into the match pretty quickly. The how the line format works is we're going to be going from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. It's going to be all line format and it's going to be top eight after that. But for the line format right now, game one is going to be all random spot zones, and then the last two matches are going to be counter back. So it could go for game three, it could go to only game two, but it's just going to be a hell of a fun time or a mess if you want to try to figure out scheduling or trying to figure out who wants to do what or have fun with it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you know, and I think the one thing that everyone's glad is that uh, we're, we're it's not Turf War. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We could have ladders without turf war, um, and that is okay. <laughs> uh, and especially with Splat is going on too. I mean, I I think everyone's gonna be sick of, of turf war by the end of the weekend. But oh hey, yeah, percent. It's Clamblet's time, Dorian. Let's dive on in here. And it looks like our teams are gonna be mostly sticking with the same comps, but I do see a Swiffer and a 96 Deco coming out on the side of the Clamfishers. Does Clamfishers having the script is gonna be a one shot, one kill, and the bubbler for the script, actually being able to save it right in the middle. And also the 96 Scout Deco is gonna be actually playing off the cock and cheese against for the side of Super Team 5, though still going the same old shot comp with the Dreadwinger, mostly trying to push it with the Weed Slider is really possible. But again, the aggression that we saw from the last game is definitely already going to play with already Dreadwinger and <laughs> with the Super Team 5 waiting for the Weed Slider for the cheese in and ready for defense as well. Yes, as we do see, it is going to be Super Team 5 that strikes first here. They did have that second power climb that's not going to make it into the basket. Uh, now we're going to get uh, Afro Tie dropping in all four clamps. Oh my gosh. And another DC. However, this one is within the time Different. limit. And sorry, the time limit and the score limit. So this one will get ended um, right in the nick of time. <laughs> <laughs> So oh. uh, we'll go ahead and reset this one. It just does not seem like it is Super Team 5's day on the internet. 
It's time for the room change. It's time for the host change. That, that's, that's the call. It, it's time for the host change. We get to the second DC. I, I would agree with that. Um, you know, given that this is a Clam Fishers hosted room, Super Team 5 is dis- uh, has a team member consistently disconnecting. So, um, yeah, I think that's probably the right play. Uh, so we'll watch we'll see if, what these teams do. Or maybe, you know, Super Team 5 does have a fifth person on their roster, so they could try to pivot over to that fifth member as well to see if there's any difference there. Uh, a number of different ways to approach this one. So teams look like they'll go ahead and sort this one uh, internally. And yes, uh, we do get that room change, as we can tell you from uh, our internal view here. Uh, so we'll, it, it'll be a minute, uh, as we kind of get this one up and running again. Yeah, but while we have that downtime while we wait for the room, uh, DOF, what team are you for Spotfest? Oh boy, um... <laughs> You're thinking about this party, man. Is it, is it bad that I haven't picked a team yet? No, it's not at all. <laughs> because that means, Good. that, that means you're calm and you don't need to care about the pets because you want to separate things too from what i know about a certain thing that i don't know if we can say about it uh, and can, can we talk about other tournaments <laughs> well, well, well we'll go ahead and you know well we will talk about other tournaments here for now but um but you know uh Jordan, what, what, what team are you on because may, maybe maybe this is the moment where i pick a team right here right now <laughs> that, that would be really funny if i ask our streamer here i'm on team hug but it's only gonna be like the like fifth like only gonna be like 25 percent but because there's 75 percent on fist bump like <laughs> oh my gosh fist bump is has too many players and handshake has five people for, for, for those for those of you on team hand handshake in chat raise your hands be loud and proud about it uh because you are carrying an entire team between the five of you um at least that that's at least that's that's what i have, have gotten so far from this plot fest is that yeah it seems like uh popularity is going to be entirely in fist bump uh hug is going to try to you know overtake here and then um handshakes army of five they're they're going strong yeah but really for the side of like handshake i get for me for me i did play a little bit for handshake because playing with a friend you know it's best to have an alt for that but in that scenario we still find through so many fist bumps like <laughs> Basically, all the matches so far has been fist bumps, no handshakes. So that does definitely say something, but it's a good thing we have low ink, ladder ink, and so we don't need to worry about that for like a couple hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, screw this flat fest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I literally just not had time uh, to play flat fest at all uh, so far. Um, so so may, maybe after this, but you know, I, I, I feel like it just team fist bump does have the natural advantage because like in the game, you're not seeing any of the Inklings handshake. You're not seeing them hug. You're seeing them fist bump and you're seeing them fist bump you know every single time that you do something cool with your teammates so like i feel like it's just very natural i, I don't know i feel like this is kind of just a a one-sided effort from the start uh and may, maybe nintendo's also just trying to give fry a, a boost here basically you could say rig to win because of the ink color too which is you know it's america and the memes from that yeah it's technically you could say it's rig to win for five because they're actually listening to the audience now but for japan it's food like what do you call like a red bean uh dessert like oh gosh like, yeah like, no and, and, and yeah <laughs> <laughs> and i'm not even a big fan of red bean either like i don't know it's it's just not not my vibe i mean you know i don't know I guess I guess I'm a filthy American that loves sweets, uh, but <laughs> you know, red 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 bean just not sweet enough. Um, so th- that that was not my vibe. So we'll we'll let, so in my opinion, they th- they could go figure that out. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, it'll it'll be it'll be fun to see how this uh, kind of uh, progresses, and Fry might be able to come out with a victory here. Uh, at least that, but just based off of what the early standings seem to be. 
Hmm. But honestly, I think we I think we went too far. Uh, I think we went too far about talking about all that and those profits. I think we can drop that a little bit as the teams are joining to the room. Let's talk about again clamp is a particle of time again from what we saw from the, that little story. Yeah. Um. You know, Super Team Five was off to a very fast start there in that. Clan Blitz, Barnacle, and Dime game. I mean, like, they they were very aggressive. They got a couple of early picks and seemed to have started to spiral things in their favor. Uh, you know, maybe it was a, almost a blessing in disguise that they did not get that second power clam in because then they would have kind of been stuck fighting out the rest. So, you know, I guess, <laughs> you know, Clan Fishers kind of saved them a little bit uh, for, for the replay um, as we suddenly saw everyone ready up and then unready up. So, oh boy, uh, <laughs> this is, is going to continue to be a, a treat of a match here, I think. Yeah, um, <laughs> because like, remember in, in the rules, it's saying like, if you DC, like, can you reset weapons? That, that you can choose your weapons, which is uh, most likely a no, if I remember correctly in lowering rules, that like, you cannot change your weapon if a beta is played unless you have yeah, like a swap player unless you have a swap player which uh no at, at this point it's going to just be the same four players coming out from super team five so nothing really changing there as we are now ready after our extended break here in game number two to get things kicked off once again let's roll this time hopefully for real yeah now this time super team 5 is going to be in the teal ball for the side of clamp is going to be in the orange that that's the same way they can see on the top left for the scoreboard finally but anyways again the start of the match we see the same thing going on and one thing that's actually different as well that we never even noticed as well for the side of super team 5 three suction bombs yeah um you know definitely going to be oh sorry uh definitely gonna uh you know, really help them here just to try to maintain some pressure as, yes, we will see the two down. Oh, got a triple from Savage Wolf there. Nice picks as Wobber going to try to hold down the defensive fort here. Not going to be able to do so for too long. Able to buy their team just a little bit of time to get back into this one. And it looks like that we are just right back where we had left off, Jorian, which Super Team 5 getting an early push here and the pressure is all in their favor. Yeah, but no second ball this time, but there is so many separate clans for Super Team 5 to actually get a many clans, but also two down on the side. Up clan pitches, one ball coming in, another single clan coming in, but also Kraken coming up disowning again too, so that's really good for defense on clan pitches. They learned a little bit. Yeah, and they're going to continue to hold this down as two members going down on either side. Power Clam being tossed around here. A lot of clams in the mid. Um, and it looks like another push could be at the ready. But I think the one nice thing here for Clam Fishers is that they stopped this push a lot faster than they did the first time. So, hey, maybe that replay worked out in their favor as well as they are able to kind of get more of a defensive footing here. Uh, but it doesn't look like it's going to last for long as it once again, Super Team 5 gearing up for a push, 28 clams in hand. Yeah, you know what's funny too for Super Team 5? Once they get the once they get nice little clams past the like past the little green box area, the clan respawn is going to happen at the minute mark. So there is going to be a lot more clans for Super Team 5 to have fun with the mid card going in with that Dread Ringer. It's going to be a double ball play, and that's going to be going down to 48, maybe even more, but the t tech is going to be all the way in the back, and it's going to be winning for a bit because that play was definitely risky, and you need to have pain in the old base, like Afro is doing right now. Yeah, absolutely. But for the first time, we do see Clam Fishers getting back control of mid, trying to flip this one on its head. Uh, so that three down, uh, you know, wipe, basically wipe out uh, is exactly what they needed. Because, I mean, look at this. They have 27 clams now. And if they could find a pick here, they will be in a great spot. And the Kraken's coming in. They're going to try to triple jump this. Here comes oh. one. Here comes two. There's the Oh my, oh wait, no! Three in, but it's going to be a wipeout! That oh, an ambitious play! Oh my god, that one single shot play, I think that was either Zenobi or Mekog or Savage Wolf. And one of them done a bomb and got one shot and got a kill on that last ball player, which denied them to go in. 
in the matter of flames. So basically that going to be in the side of Super Team 5 with the cheats as well. Going for a double play instead. Going for that revenge and that's screwed down once again. We're just going to see jumping alley here on the side of Clampus Barco. Time to get to just a flash mat anyways. But we're going to be sitting on this stalemate now. Waiting for either team to get two balls again or waiting for the pack of cheats once again. Yeah, and, and welcome to the stage of Clam Blitz, everybody, where <laughs> we build up Krakens and Reef Sliders. I mean, look at this! Oh <laughs> my <laughs> god! Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> three for three! Oh, oh my three god! They did it! No, wait! Oh no! They did it! No, wait, no, they did all three! No, they got all three! But they're still gonna be 15 points shy of tying this one! And oh we are getting four kills <laughs> Welcome to ladder make everyone. It's just like a ladder itself. You need to get clamped, you need to climb up the ladder, you need to climb up to the clam bath, you need to get doubles like Apple did. Like like Savage will did once again being a savage, getting the double kills, getting the trip out the savage is giving the potential of uh, doing a lockdown once again as Super Team done has done before. Savage Wolf is gonna be sick on top and getting another ball in and maybe another cheat is gonna happen soon enough. Which oh. is happening right now. And that should put this one out of reach if they don't get this power clamp in. And oh they will! And that's the KO in what has got to be a record for most power clamp jumps in a single low-ink game. Um, <laughs> I mean, we continue to get a very unique start to low-ink here in... Uh, November 2023 um, really just have not quite had this this first match ever <laughs> uh, in the matter of of like a minute 30 seconds I could say now like no in a matter of a minute how many jumps with clamps has been played off of both teams was basically 11 11 clams has been cheese on both sides to get all the way down to, to 20 and a KO. Oh my god. Wait, did you actually count that? It was, it was I, actually 11? It was like, a, like, it like 11 and a minute 30. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh oh man. Gosh. We'll, we'll, have, we'll have to go again uh, and probably an official count because like I need to know how many total there were. Uh, because like I, you know, you're, you're probably spot on there. Um, you know, and and those, you know, we, we we probably could get statistics on like conversion rates of power clam <laughs> jumps that actually landed uh, because I think we we had one, maybe two that didn't hit. Um, oh, yeah. So, so, you know, we're this is this is basically this is really uh, American football now. Uh, oh, yeah. we're, we're, look, we're looking at third down conversions and, you know, pass passing rates and all that type of stuff. Uh, so I don't know that that was certainly one of the starting matches of all time. <laughs> <laughs> it was chaotic, but it was so cool. But anyways, with that to calm down a little bit, we can maybe talk about the bracket a little bit, but by bracket, I mean the ladder standings. Because, again, it's been only 30 minutes and matches could have been swept by now. In the ladder kind of format, you have to have five matches played and then you will be qualified to be able to play in top cut. But for top eight right now, with only two matches in play, why not be? Why not you say about the top eight right now? If you have the back of the way, hold on. <laughs> yeah, uh, yes, I do actually. Um, so we do have a couple teams that have swept their way through uh, their first couple matches actually. Um, so we do have Origami Dragon and the Almond Nuts both at two and zero to get things started. Uh, so a great start for those teams. And then we have um, after that twenty different teams that are one and zero. So uh, that's gonna kind of you know be a. Uh, a 20-way tie. Uh, <laughs> so uh, the rest of these teams uh, that are in this top eight, I don't think matter all that much uh, given their 1-0 and start. Uh, but I guess Battle 5 recognizes, um, you know, out of opinion, Kiwi Ice Cream, Double Trouble, Monsoon, Siege White, and Inception. But um, yeah, that's not going to stand for, um, you know, five minutes from now as we start to collect some more results and these 1-0 teams start facing each other uh, to, you know, start really nudging their way to hopefully land in that top eight.
Yeah, and as you guys can see the bracket on screen right now on stream, again, the names that we should recognize from previous low ranks before, or gone with Dragon's amount of opinions, they were OGs of low rank ever since the past, mate. Like, this is the last time they're playing for a while again, actually. Alba Nuts, Kiwi Ice Cream, Double Trouble, Moon Sun, Siege Wake is definitely brand new teams as well. Inception, I feel like they have been around before, like, ever since the LSL series, but they might be having a different roster now. Yeah, um, so you know, hopefully we'll we'll get a couple of those other teams on stream as well. Oh, excuse me. Um, but it looks like uh, we might have uh, another match on deck here soon enough. We do. Uh, excuse me. Sorry, my <laughs> need some water here, Jory, and save me on this one. Yeah, it's fine. I'm just going to talk about a little, a little bit of one actual team that's on the bottom of the ninth place team, actually. Uh, ch uh, it's, it's a it's a, a hard name because it's actually going to be in, uh, you know, like Dutch or Sweden. I forgot, I forgot about it. It's going to be Chippa uh, Fetit here, Gamble Waffen, which is actually having a noble player who is actually a streamer for that production's brownie. I want to wow. shout him out because of that. Yes, no, we we, we love our production community. Um, as we'll give a quick shout out to uh, our favorite producer here, Ink Fairer, behind the scenes, getting things done for us, um, making sure that things are running smooth as always. So. Yep. We oh. didn't get a rematch, <laughs> like, sorry enough. So. That's the good thing, so we're going to be winning a little bit before non is going to be coming in play. But before uh, we leave again, just one last little update for the bracket. Octoplasm has snuck their way into the top 8. Nice. Alright, well, let's go ahead and I think we're going to take a very um, short break as we kind of get things uh, situated here. Um, so just to make sure that we have our next match on deck. So we'll be back in just two moments um, to give you the next match of Ladder Inc. Welcome back gamers, back to Lado Inc, our second match of the night, my second match of the day, if you ever take it this way. We're going to be seeing Miss Q vs Blake Spooter 
Danish team versus another European team, but for Miss Q, they've been grinding a little bit actually from what I know. They've been playing in tournament just like Squid Junction, if I remember. They've been playing in SOS. They played in stuff like Tropical Tuesdays as well. So they've been on the one and they've been trying to grind out as much results as they can. Even coming back in low for maybe their third month in a row now, maybe fourth month in a row. Yeah. Um, so should be, you know, pretty exciting here. Um, so I, for one, am not uh, as familiar with these two teams, uh, but excited to see what they're all about. Um, so as we were kind of loading in here, trying to uh, figure out what the proper pronunciation is of uh, Blake Spruter, um, as you know, that is a, a supposedly Danish for octopuses, um, according to Google. Uh, but I mean, I, I am not Dutch, so uh, you know. So I don't. I don't know. Um, so we, you know. But, but it, it is certainly fun to get uh, these European teams to kind of just translate around uh, some some of these uh, team names. As we are getting official word here that game number one is going to be Splat Zones on Umami Ruins. Uh, so certainly a fun two-zone map, and the only time that we really get to appreciate Umami. Yeah, for the size of Spastos Umami, again, the pool for Spastos is going to be 5 maps in the randomizer, so we have the best RNG for that, not best of TOs for that kind of map, but we're going to the match right now, so we can even talk about the map while it's going in, but for the side of Black Spooder on the TO, that's going to be an alpha, and for the side of of Miscure on the buff, it's going to be in the pink. We're going to be seeing the comps is going to be pretty well known for Blastons, actually. Yeah, this is a pretty, you know, interesting composition here. Uh, of course, you got to have a, a B shot on either side, um, but it will be Miscue on the, the pencil and dualies and slosher combo. I mean, certainly, you know, not a combination that you see a whole lot of. Like, you'll see the individual weapons, but uh, definitely, you know, uh, haven't seen them a whole lot uh, together here. And, um, you know, that, that I guess they're going to try to hope that this crab will establish position in mid. The slosher is going to be able to drop those trip strikes wherever and flip the zone just like this. Uh, and that will just barely not be enough for Miss Q to get first cap of the zone. Yeah, it's so close enough again because all the teams weren't able to coordinate together and the weapons itself on the side of Miss Q actually. No, the one thing as well, this, this is Blake Spruce comp for that and it does make sense because of the best blend so it can actually cap one zone. Just stay shooting on that one for the crab. As you mentioned before, it's going to be staying on that little ledge circle platform and the tri that you saw before, it's going to be just capped by the zone. Trying to go for all together if the cap is necessary, but at the same time too, look at this little bit of a camp out on the side of Miss Q base for the 52 for the ball point they won't be able to get any paint off their side of like scooter because they just keep on shooting it after and they don't have any special special to come back only aggressive special actually yeah uh and this oh, is wow. miss q running away with this one the 52 trying to shark but no has to dump, uh, jump out um and that's gonna be the game here as Miscue's gonna run away with this one. And despite losing two down, they will be fine. So an excellent push uh, once they finally got control of the zone there uh, to be able to run away with that one. Yeah, they might have learned from watching a little bit of turn bits and stuff about how to play zones. It's a painting game, not an aggressive game. This is the only time they can play Stagnate on two zones. Yeah, um, so you know what you know what seemed to be a little bit of back and forth at the beginning, uh, just just to try to get a solid grip of that zone, um, just um, uh, tumbled into a big snowball effect here uh, to be able to just run away in game number one. Um, so you know, Pope, and you know, you, you tend to get that sometimes in uh, particularly spot zones, Umami. So uh, if if you're Blixberter, um, just don't, like, you know, you can't let that one, uh, you know, really affect you and the rest of the set. You kind of just need to brush off, like, hey, we got locked out. That's fine. It happens. You know, now we get counter pick. Let's go somewhere <laughs> to make sure that, that uh, you know, it go, go somewhere that we can, I guess, more easily establish our defenses and try to, you know, work our way back into this objective. Um, you know, so just move on from that one. That's all you really can do. 
Oh my gosh, what I'm seeing right now is so cute. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we just have both, both, both players from both teams circling uh, Ink Fair in the lobby. Um, also, <laughs> as well, also as well, this is Team Hug, and t there's a Team Hug, Team Fist Swap, and Team Handshake all circling around each other like friends. But also, it seems like the counter pick is actually going to be in play if you can maybe uh, look at that real quick. It's going to be Waymaker on Undertale Spillway, actually. Okay. So, yeah, uh, I think this is a fantastic choice. Um, you know, it's going to... You're, you're definitely not going to get locked out in, uh, in this type of map mode. Uh, you're, you should get a fair bit of, you know, back and forth uh, with, you know, the, the Rainmaker. So just being able to, you know, if you can get that Rainmaker shut down, just focus on uh, pushing everyone else out of your base. You need to get those picks if uh, the team, if your the opposing team ends up pushing deep in, uh, into your own base. Um, so, you know, that's just going to be naming the game. It's just make sure you clear everybody out. And the, from there, you can turn defense into offense um, if, you know, if you see yourself in that position. Uh, but otherwise, it'll be interesting to see, you know, the the offensive strategies that these teams are going to be coming out with here. You know, that's Rainmaker Undertow is uh, Rainmaker is just one of the best map modes in this game because there's so many ways that you can approach this. Yeah, and do you have like one question too that a lot of people have in mind because it's Waymaker. And knowing from your play with Trisoster, do you go right or left first? Um, well, it depends. I mean, you typically go left, uh, but if you get a wipe, I mean, you better just swing it right because that's just free and easy points. <laughs> But as you see, for right now, on the comps of both sides, nothing really changed on the other side than the side of Miss Q, who has the shot instead of the soft, instead of the soft at this time. So basically, more or less equal comps. Wait, it's the same thing. Wait, yeah, is this a mirror match? Yeah, wait, this is... <laughs> <laughs> this is a mirror match, oh no! <laughs> well, I guess we could just talk about the, the, the same comp here. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. No need to analyze when either team's bring it out, because uh, it's, it's, it's mirror match all day long, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. But if you see right now, this is the stack, or this is the actual stalemate of who gets the zone push, who gets the cap push. We see that actually for the side of Lex, of Miscue, actually, they get the push, but they're going to decide to go left, right, but also cheese the left and go left because it's a little bit of a joke and also dancing a little bit, but the Mimic is still. Yeah. Yeah, and it looks like uh, very quickly it's going to be Miscue all the way up to this pedestal. Oh, the wipe out. They're going to be able to carry this much beyond this 60 point mark. Uh, the question is how far. Wait, no one. No one's grabbing it! Why oh is no! He's the Rainmaker and everybody's back up now! This push is not gonna get as far as they probably hoped initially. Oh, uh, but they do get one, they do get two, they do, do get three. Okay, never mind. Oh, okay, so, okay. All right, so you, that was all part of the plan. All part of the plan. Forget what I said. Um, <laughs> as we get a probably even cleaner knockout. I mean, that was very, very fast. <laughs> That was definitely very, very fast. On this, what happened on the side of Miscue, like, they delayed a little bit because they didn't want to go for the KO. Uh, like, really quick, because they had everyone on a special, so they might have wanted to wait until the special ends, and they get just pushed up out as a team. Or mostly because they were just waiting to get another triple to post on Twitter. <laughs> it was one or the other, you know. Uh, <laughs> uh, just, just, just really, um... You can feel the confidence from them uh, as they are going to clean this set out 2-0. Uh, oh yeah. So that I, we're, we're we're getting some quick matches here. I mean, I guess that last match wasn't quick, but the the you know so far these matches uh, have just been clean 2-0s. Uh, you know, pretty decisive in uh, favor of the winning team. Uh, so. Hey, I mean, that's just how it goes in a lot of format. Uh, you really just don't know what you're going to get. And it's like, you know, GG, get next. Uh, hop back <laughs> in the queue and, you know, see if you can take on the next opponent. I can't believe you just said GG, get next. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, other than that, uh, we do have a match coming up in an instant, but we can talk about the leaderboard real quick because that is going to be huge changing. Yes. Miss you winning <laughs> this 
third match for them actually, but first place being all Gamma Dragon still alive. Kiwi Ice Cream actually bumping up against Moonsun going to the third spot. Inception bumping up to the fifth spot. Autumn Nuts, who was actually, I think, in the same spot, going down down to sixth. Chip Flit, uh, Brownie Team, is going to be in the seventh. <laughs> and the Luminous Scalpies <laughs> is going to be sneaking up the way into the eighth. Matter of Opinion only played one match so far, as they were up in fourth before, but now they're going to be down in tenth. Still having that 100% win rate, and because they were the first match to be played. And while overtime has sneaked their way up tonight, being playing the second set now, but who knows how many people are playing still right now in a 16 team ladder format. Yeah, um, and of course, like, you, you can basically, like, I just hit refresh and, like, yeah, a couple things have already changed, too. Oh, my. Uh, so, Super Team 5, I think, uh, and Royal Succulents, uh, wait, no, I think one of them was there, but uh, yes. Overtime now, Truno as well. Um, so, you know, things are just going to continue to move. Uh, that, that's one of the fun parts about Ladder is that the standings are always changing. Um, and, you know, in a way, you have to get creative um, to, you know, figure out exactly when you're going to stop playing as, you know, we have our next match on deck. So these two teams not stopping anytime soon. It's going to be Krill Streak taking on Diamond Dust. Uh, Krill Streak, you know, definitely an old favorite if you are, uh, you know, from way back in the day, I guess. Um, you know, they, they've been grinding it out the past couple months. So I'm, I'm a big fan of this team and very, very excited to see them here today. Yeah, for Time and Dust, they're going to be a new team altogether with like new names altogether. So we can maybe see some new blood for Lowing, but for Killstreak, as you said before, yeah, they are. Oh, geez, I remember them myself playing against them in playoffs of Ludi. They, I think, six like a couple of years ago. That's how, or no, in groups a couple of years ago. It's really OG how they are, but they took a little bit of a break and now they're going once again in Splatoon 3. They have new players Nova, Milk, and Camo are OGs if I remember correctly, but Cloud is going to be one of the new names that are going to be seeing in the match today Mart as well as going to be a new person from the Boston if I remember correctly yeah I, I want to agree with that um, you know Cameron Nova Milk all names that I'm super familiar with as well uh, so you know get get ready to, to see you know some interesting comps if I remember correctly uh, Camo does tend to rock the, the tent um, so you know good chance that we'll see that come out as uh, no, no, not gonna be this time, uh, but we will see a couple of other interesting choices here, as that is the Carbon Deco from Milk, and that's a ZNF, uh, Charger from Cloud, so a couple of weapons that, uh, you don't get to see a whole lot of, but, uh, should be very exciting here, uh, Bo and Machine Neo gonna be coming out, uh, on the flip side. Yeah, it's really good that you mentioned the inclined swinger because that's something that you rarely see these days. Again, if you play a swinger, you will be one in the east, but if you have but you have excellent aim if you do have that. But we see right now it's going to be a really close match. The incline still being alive. Mostly staying in the back to play for defense as we see already before. No specials to play yet, surprisingly. But they have super jumps. So what they can do for that is play for defense and play and pin it into their own base on the side of Kill Street. But for right now again, we're gonna see the fight. The calm is going down a lot and a lot. That's gonna be really good for the side of Diamond Dust. Ooh, a nice peak shot there from Cloud. And that's gonna shut down the back line from Diamond Dust. Uh, zone still held in their favor though, as the members of Krill Street continue to just poke at this zone, trying to stay out of the reach of the members of Diamond Dust. But at the same time, that just means they haven't been able to flip this zone yet, as they're gonna lose a couple players here. And this will be Diamond Dust that continues to hold on to this. Uh, neutral state though on the other zone, finally gonna have to be uh, backed up here. But no, it's like oh. Milk coming in on triple. Milk actually being the, again, a well-known card play from back, back in the day and now showing the action once again, being wonderful in the bitch this time of Diamond Dust, killing off the Stinger, killing off the Slot and Sheet, killing off the Zap. The only thing that's left is, is the Spy Show, who has their Isuka that tries to get playing up right now, but they actually do win the zone against Diamond Dust for Kill Streak. They're going to be playing defense all they want, and the Carbon Milk is just going to be the ledge farming on the Circle Platform. What a cool comes out. Yeah, and I think that 
that single play is the turning tide here as Krill Streak is pushed up big time now. And this is starting to spell trouble for Diamond Dust. They just cannot find a way back in the zone. The ZNF getting two huge picks there. It, it, Krill Streak doesn't even need to move in much further. They just need to hold this position now and keep paint on the zone. They should be able to run away with this one. The last second Zuka trying to come in to help neutralize the zone, but it's not going to be in time as Krill Streak breaks this game wide open and runs away with it. I mean, what a clutch play out of Milk to turn the tide in this one. Aggression is key in Splatstones. Once you have the aggressive push, you can go in automatically. We saw it have with Diving Dust, having the 1v1s, winning those 1v1s, but once that aggressive push, having that 3 down on the side of Diving Dust for Ghost Week, they just were able to go in at the end. Yeah, uh, wow. I mean, that was, that was really really cool to see um you know it, it really just felt like diamond dust's game for the first minute and a half there um but krill streak was always just at the door knocking waiting waiting to be let in and finally when when milk kicked it down and said hey it's carbon deco time uh <laughs> <laughs> so that huge, huge play there to to flip that one. So Krill Streak going up 1-0 in this set, and uh, you know this this set already feeling uh, a fair bit closer than the the past couple ones that we've seen. Yeah, because it's just going back and forth, but we always saw that before, and then just one single push goes in. But with this one single push that's coming in, let's talk about Waymaker Score Scored, which is going to be the next map coming off on the side of Diamond Dust. Yes, so that counter pick came in pretty quickly here. So Diamond Dust knows exactly where they want to go, and it is Rainmaker Scorch Gorge. Um, so, you know, going to be curious to see if there's going to be composition adjustments. Um, I don't quite know how to, to see that comp that they're running in this map mode in particular, especially with the, the, uh, the tri stringer um so i'm gonna be really curious to see what the strategy is for this team coming into this one yeah for the team of diamond dots who did not see the counter pick in chat uh it would be it would be great by the way for anyone in the future if you have counter picks, please say it in the chat for you know streamers or tos if you are going to be on stream or anything just to clarify results just in case anything happens but anyways uh yeah the stringer is going to be mostly staying on the top staying on the ledge mostly trying to aim like a sniper on the side of like camo nova milk again we see the regular Ball point only happens a sniper one or two, but also for milk doing carbon. He, milk has advantage to ledge bomb once again. Sneak so many times, go up the great in the middle actually. Mm hmm. Um, you know, and I know I'm not crazy. I know, I know that Krill Street does run the tent <laughs> from time to time, uh, but this could be an opportunity to bring it out, especially if you could rock that back, get a solid push in, uh, break through that first checkpoint. I mean, that's, you know, that's how you, that's how you win the game. But no, they're going to go ahead and stick with the composition that won them game number one. On the flip side, Diamond does come out with some big changes here, bringing out the Explo and the Blaster. Explo over Stringer does make sense for consistency. The blaster coming in for the electron to, to actually battle against milk it does make sense because that's going to be able to do chip damage and actually walk him out or walk them out instead. Yeah, so some some good adjustments here. Glad to see it uh, because that's a fantastic analysis there. Uh, you're going to have to find a way to deal with milk and this blaster should be able to help out with that. Explo should provide you know a little bit more paint uh, because that's also going to be another way that you shut out a carbon deco. But as you see right now, with the shut off of the carbon deck, not really in play yet. Well, actually, no, they did because they got cut off by the side of the Trizuka, most likely. They're going to be running a little bit as everyone's going to be in the middle. Same thing as we saw before, but we're going to be seeing Camo this time going for the matches on the Zap, actually going with the cooler, trying to go left on the bear on that checkpoint, fouling one with one shot. Yeah, and look at that. The Camo coming up big there, forcing two players to have to go and pick them off. So now that's going to just open up that right checkpoint, and it seems like Krill Streak's gonna slow this one down a little bit, not try to force anything, Ooh. but they could now maybe with that pick. Uh, this Charger getting it done. I mean, Cloud 
Just getting some nice picks so far. This Rainmaker will reset, but it was a nice opening push for Krill Streak. Dio, you did see the Cloud getting the side button left. You see Camo on, on the end up just playing dancing a little bit on the left. Do you think they're playing for distraction instead? Rather than just going in face first, bailing more like playing more safe than more aggro? For after this first act one at least uh, right now because they're waiting for milk. Yeah, um, and I think that's what's the play. That's what the play seems to be here. As we're, they're gonna go ahead and take this one to left. Um, so very interesting choice. And now they're running what? it down the lane all the way up to the pillow. Uh, so it seems like that's where this one will stop. But milk isn't done yet. Milk is gonna go ahead and try to shark this one out. Uh, no, not gonna be able to get it. Uh, oh, oh there we wait. go. You're gonna get the pick after all. I thought for sure that they were gonna be seen. Uh, but gonna get the pick and back up. The, the damage was already done. This is going to slow down this push significantly. Yeah, but the, but the slow down push immediately and the try to go almost killing the actual with no backline support if that kill was actually made. We see for the side of Diamond Dust playing a little bit more safe as they were before on our side of Kill Street, but this time they're getting numbers off them instead of on them. So in the point from right now, we see the Kill getting the Rainmaker. I get Rock trying to go for, for the great area once again. They're going to have a destruction on the white, which is going to be the shot this time. We're going to get killed off this time. We're going to go for the one one Chuck and get the assist on that. But mostly it's going to be the <laughs> I mean, that landed and I got the assist. <laughs> oh, <laughs> classic. Oh, but um, they're going to go ahead and continue to hold this one. Uh, a Rainmaker in possession of Cruel Streak. Go uh, all the way, you know, trying to get it back to where they had left off with. They, they seem to be in a good position to do so, but going to lose a number here. The second number going to go down. So this is just going to be how long can they hold it here and burn time off the clock. It doesn't seem like they're going to uh, turn this into much score here. Yeah, that's going to get shut down. So yeah. finally, it looks like Diamond Dust is in a position to get something moving here. Only the Charger stands in their way at this moment. Members trying to get back in to back up their back line for Krill Street. There's something interesting about Diamond Dust as well, if you mentioned, if you see about the whole match. They're all playing Cuddle Up together instead of having one go far ahead. They're playing all together as a team, but with the Blast Man playing, not trying to go for the charge against a, against a Sniper, which was really a menace to them the whole time, getting the picks off the Remaker, and any of the solo plays in action, but tries to get out Dust Cuddle Up the Sniper finally after a little bit of time. But still, they need to kill up the Sniper, they need to have someone to push up against them. So they can push up until the checkpoint because that's what they're really struggling against right now. Yeah, absolutely. As we, as this time is all the way down to 45 seconds remaining now. Girl Streak's done a great job of just, you know, getting the push they needed and then just burning clock this entire time. Uh, but now it seems like with a decent amount of purple paint here in mid, this could be an opportunity. The Suzuka's gonna come out, but no one gets shut down by Cloud! Cloud continuing to come up big here, as the oh. is gonna come out as well and get a double from Milk! Big plays from multiple members here on Krill Street. This Raymaker is gonna get picked up and brought back, trying to wait out some specials. Now there's still a Zuka in play for Krill Streak as Diamond Dust is on their last stand here for this set. Two members gonna go down, overtime in play. They don't have much time to get this all the way to the first checkpoint. Dancing around this Zuka, able to survive it. No other specials in play for Krill Streak at this point, but their members continue to go down and that's gonna be a two for two here. An opportunity for Diamond Dust but no, it's from behind here. It's, I believe that was the shot that got that pick. And this one will be 2-0 in favor of Krill Streak. Camera got to shut down in the end. They knew what they needed to do with, with spreading everyone apart on the side of Diamond Dust. And with that, they got the 2-0 lead in the win. But again, saying about Kill Streak, though, the aggressive play all along was just able to just to make Diamond Dust actually go to the dust. And that's going to be another win in the record for the latter stage. Yeah. Um, yeah. So another 2-0. Uh, you know, just real quick for, for Krill Shriek. Um, I, I, I don't know when, when Cloud necessarily came into the picture, but massive pickup. That's all I'm going to say. That was a massive pickup for this roster. Uh, Cloud just seems to fit in so seamlessly with with this team. Uh, and I, I was thoroughly impressed uh, that this is 
Krill streak that I know and love. Um, so kudos to them um, for you know putting together a, a masterclass here in those two games. Uh, Diamond Dust, I put up a really solid effort there. I mean, they did a great job of just you know. Uh, holding down, you know, early control of mid, uh, but you know, just it seemed like once Krill Shriek broke through, it was just so hard to get back in. And you know, hey, sometimes that's just how it goes. But uh, just want to extend my kudos also to Diamond Dust. Yeah, banana bucket for Kill Shriek. They are going to be in 39th place. As for my see by now going one to two in their standings, but. For the side of, you know, Diamond Dust, they're going to go down to 0-3, but again, there's so many games, there's only two more hours left of the ladder, they can still keep on grinding it out, as you can see by now with the teams going into round 5 of matches, actually, as you can see for all Grime Giants and Miss Q going 4-0 right now, Moon Sun going to be going 3-0 right now. Gamma Waffen, we're going to call them that, going 3-0. <laughs> well, Succulent's going to be going 3-0, Super Team 5 going 3-0, and Crescent Knight going to be going 2-0. That should be up to the as well, but there is two names at the bottom. Cre there is Tentacolor that actually is on the leaderboard right now, but it's not there anymore actually, because of the refresh. <laughs> and <laughs> Calamity the refresh 4 button. Neo. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Calamity 4 Neo, Neo and Lice Moon is 9th and 10th by the way, as of right now, in my view. Yes, yeah, so Tech, tech the Color does uh, drop a set. Um, of course, you know, it, the beauty of ladder. Um, so, you know, what you what you see on screen, this, this is, uh, I don't know, is this, is this a Schrodinger's cat example right now where, you know, it's snapshot in time type thing, you know, you can't know both where and you know how fast whatever but yeah. uh yeah th 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 this is merely a snapshot right now um so you know things are constantly changing <laughs> continue to hit that refresh button to get the the latest updated standings because uh things move fast when you play ladder yeah and remember for chat I, on YouTube, on Twitch, and YouTube this time, actually, you should be able to do a hat or on bracket to go to the Battlefly and see the bracket the stage for yourself. Okay, maybe not YouTube, unfortunately, but you can go to... I, I think the link is, like... You can go to play.ipl.inc.li to see the bracket that's the bracket following this month if you're on YouTube. But on Twitch, do a hatchmation on bracket. You get to see it there. <laughs> oh man. Uh, so, well, uh, looks like uh, for, for now we are still gonna be waiting for uh, another set, but um, it looks, you know, e e eagerly waiting uh, and spamming that that refresh uh, for for invites. Um, but but we'll we'll keep this going. Um, yeah. So. We are officially one hour in to our three hour ladder. Um, so, you know, we've officially passed the one third mark. Um, it's, it's, well, I need to hit my refresh again here. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I was like, wait, that's not right. I think I have like three different brackets open. And I was like, wait, why are teams still one to no? Like we've been playing for an hour. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, but, yeah. uh, you know, four, four sets, um, you know, three to four sets is exactly where you kind of want to be in terms of sets played. Uh, if you do play the full three hours, that should, you know, get you right around that um, 10 to 12 range, which is typically what you want to see because uh, the number of sets you play do matter. Um, so, you know, you if you are you know, 80% win rate, uh, you know, you do get a slight advantage from playing more sets than someone who is 80% but has only played, you know, half the sets. So that definitely matters quite a bit. Uh, I know that, you know, there's some teams myself, um, well, my team included, that uh, our objective is always to just play as many damn sets as you can. <laughs> yeah. And so. <laughs> Yeah, I remember that, like, uh, like saying about like a long time ago with the low, with the turf foil ladder back when Nintendo did it back in 2020s, but uh, back in 2020s with Tune Two, I actually have a highlight moment from that with my team. Uh, we we played the hell out of that ladder and we got top yep. eight out of like everyone with everyone else in that. <laughs> we, we, only because we played the one of the most matches in yep. the ladder format. 
So yeah, it does matter. <laughs> What, what what is what is the uh, if you remember what is the most number of sets you have played in a three hour ladder? That was tw that was twelve matches, I think, if I remember correctly, or if, like fifteen matches, if I remember correctly. Uh, and, and those are turf too, so those tend to go a little bit faster. Uh, yeah. So I forget what TZS's record is, uh, but I want to say that we've pushed sixteen out once. Dang. Um, so. It's that that's literally TZS's only objective is well obviously you know make top cut but uh yeah. but it but the secondary objective is to play the most sets out of anybody so uh, so you, you know I, I will I will give a a uh, figurative pat on the back to whatever team ends up uh, playing the most sets here today uh, so you'll you'll have a special place in my heart as a result but uh, looks like our next matchup has been decided um as we know in is uh <laughs> frantically working uh that refresh button to get into the lobby uh but it will be eats splatlands <laughs> versus shark bites hey uh before hey, can we look at the bracket again real quick uh like hit the refresh button on the bracket real quick there's something funny going along in the bracket oh no on oh yes look, oh, look, yes. look, 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 look at that look, look, look at where, that where, where, the, where the five <laughs> teams that have played five sets starts to break their way into the top eight regardless of their <laughs> record <laughs> this is what you call a speed one because big big is going zero and five but because they have five sets on their back they will first place even go going in five losses hey, big, big bagel is winning the race to my heart right now and that is what matters to, to me to me that's what matters so big bagel i love you all you know you're winning the race right now with most sets played you will get the honorary tzs award at this pace um but you know keep at it guys it's not over yet uh continue to grind this one out and uh i i i really you know I'm rooting for y'all to start getting some wins here. Uh, so, you know, we love y'all here. Keep keep at it. You're gonna get one. <laughs> okay, basically that's the terms of... Basically Big Bagel is the same of GG go next. <laughs> that's basically the term of it. But we can go back to the team now. As you said before, eat splash lines for the shark bite before I interrupt you a little bit. Joking about that. <laughs> you wouldn't buy me. No, that's all... I don't even know what we were talking about. I'm gonna be honest. So... <laughs> But but it, it is worth taking a moment to, to show the the funny speed ladder moment. Um, so we'll we'll have to see if after this set um, we're if we still have that because um, you know a lot of teams are still like only at three sets. So we'll we'll have to see. Um, but you know teams are slowly starting to get in the lobby. Uh, we'll we'll figure out what um, our first map is soon enough. Yeah, but but for talk about the teams again, East Valorant, you can see a lot of different symbols on your team. So that's mostly it's going to be a pickup. But for the side of Shockwave, who is a known team, uh, Stoneable Nids is actually Luna uh, and Sleeves of a recorded Nibbit. They were playing in Ludi. They are like in the five or six, if I remember correctly, but they didn't make playoffs, if I remember correctly as well. But they did really good in the season. Yeah, um, <clears throat> sorry, um, <laughs> it's but, uh, yeah, no, uh, certainly interesting to, to always kind of follow these teams, um, you know, everywhere they, they go, uh, you know, again, not super familiar, but I, like, I recognize, like, the names at the very least, um, so, <clears throat> So we'll just kind of have to see, you know, how this one shakes out. Um, hopefully we can maybe get a three game set. Uh, you know, that's at least what we always like to see here in the, the comms booth. Uh, it, you know, that that's always very, very exciting. But, uh, you know, time will tell on that one. So these teams, though, are in lobby. They are getting ready to go. And it looks like game number one has ultimately been decided to be Splat Zones on Mako Mart. It's cool we don't get to see a three-time of Splat Zones uh, Umami. Umami. <laughs> yeah, it was so close right there. But yeah, Splat Zones Makeup Art. Again, since you are the Tristar Jermaine, why not you head about saying information about it? Oh man, uh, Splat Zones Mako? Um, this one is always, you know, really interesting. Um, because there's a lot of different ways to 
apply pressure and to try to also work your way back into mid. Um, you know, you you can lock out here, uh, but it's certainly not an easy task to do so. So this one, it's going to definitely be a, an interesting clash early on in mid to see who's going to get first control here. But um, the, the name of the game is just don't get wiped, because if you don't get wiped, they, they can't lock you out. So just yeah. continue to, you know, play for special, you know, make some smart decisions and, you know, taking a look at some of these compositions as well. First thing that I noticed is going to be splat dualies, uh, hoping to give a little uh, bit of crab action here to uh, maybe give a bit of an extended reach. BPs on either side as well to provide uh, some ink jets and some uh, some range here. So, you know, a couple of, of interesting choices to start this one out, but uh, no big surprises other than maybe those splat duels and the splat roller. Yeah, the B bullet on his side uh, strike rate is going to be definitely an interesting play because in general you can definitely go for the from as a every bullet would do, but that's going to be usually on the top left side or the top right side. But most likely the world has ninja squid, so it does make sense why you want to go that way. In the bubble, it's going to be a huge defense against the Zuka as we see it going on on the side of strike rate themselves, actually not on the side of East Boston, but for East Boston, they do have to grab and play, waiting for it to play up as they'll go right now. Going to capture the zone as well. Ink is going to come out soon as well. It's going to be bounding against the Sarge Machine and actually going to be captured on as well. Two down on the side of Shark Rates. Yeah, uh, so definitely getting some good back and forth here to get started as Eat Splatlands is uh, in control of this one. Going to be extending their lead. Enki in an interesting spot here oh. trying to clear this guy's yes on beautiful pinch there, making a double. And that is going to be huge, but it doesn't look like they're able to keep the numbers strong there as Shark Bite's gonna come in here and flip the zone back in their favor. The BP getting a nice shot there. I don't even know if they were really aiming for that player. Uh, it seemed to be a right place, right time type of moment, but hey, that's what this game is about sometimes, as they're going to be trying to take down this roller, but no, Enki, once again, coming up with a nice pick there, trying to possibly get a double here, but uh, yes, they will actually. I thought for sure once that bubble got shredded, they were in danger, but no, they're somehow going to snake their way out of this one and still be a menace. You know, but you know when you get your special, you probably special, you get instant ink revival. So that's how you got able to get the double, maybe get the triple as well inside Inky. If you say do for Luna as well on the side of Bomber, you see right now going to be one be running on the other Bomber on the side of East Bat, which doesn't happen even. Really. Oh boy, that crazy spot on the Booyah, unfortunately playing for defense, but does get killed off in the end. The Gone does go back to East Badlands though, getting to kill off the Spire Shard, and that's going to be a vent trade. Actually, no, on the ball, but I mean, Spire Shard going to be dying on the corner as well. Yeah, so this one will be Splatlands that continue to hold on to the zone here, breaking out of the penalty. Anki holding down the front lines on their own here, and going to get some support from the Zooka in the back. And that is going to be one member down inside of Splatlands. Uh, make that two down, possibly the no, okay, that player's gonna get away. Uh, <laughs> a plus the jump pad, all right. But, you know, that's gonna be a, a pretty good situation for Shark Bites, though, um, as they now have a lot of their ink down on this map. The question is, can they hold on to this zone long enough to get back this lead? Not in a great position with the roller going down, but they're gonna somehow continue to hold on to this one for another two seconds before it flips back in the favor of the Splatlands. And that's gonna be three down on the side of Shark Bites as well, so with the ball player coming in, actually going to be soon enough popping up on the ink jet. It's going to be a matter of seconds before we're going to be see some kind of lockout on the side of these guys with two shark bites. But shark bites are going to be shark bait a little bit as they're going to be killing off and Inky is going, is going to go for the sneak, killing off the ink jet and mostly going to try to go for a second or try to go for the white side, killing kill off on the end side, no cooler, running for the white boxes, which is going to be chipping off on the third one. No jump off and that's going to be them capping the zone. Yeah, and here comes the crab now trying to create an entry point for Eat Splatlands. Uh, able to force a jump out there plus the pick, so this zone should flip without the penalty being broken by Shark Bites. Uh, one minute to play now. Uh, ooh, and, and interesting trying to camp the jump there, but no, that's a clutch teammate right there coming in to protect their people. Uh, and this one will probably flip. 
uh, with that two down. And hey, this is exactly what you love to see on Spot Zone's Mako Mart, a good back and forth showdown. Uh, neither team has had a real extended control of this zone. Um, so far, it's just been, you know, slightly longer in favor of the Feet Splatlands. And this one is going to come down to, I think, whoever gets, you know, the, the key picks here in these final 20 seconds. Yeah, that's going to be based off the Waller versus the Duelies, the Blob fights each other, the T-Tech versus the Sock Machine, who will be killing off the Painter of the map, which, which is going to be mined up for the last 6 seconds with the Ball Point. Oh. Ash is still going in play, the Booyah going to play, that's going to be getting killed off, and that's going to be each spot on the end first point, after so much damage from Shark Bites. Yeah, uh, they did. Sharkbaits did a fantastic job of just keeping themselves within arm's reach of possibly taking the lead. Just was never able to hold on to the zone long enough to pull it off. So unfortunately for them, going to be going down 0-1 in this set. But I think this is a good indicator of what is to come between these two teams in this best of three. You know what's crazy? What? You can count pick you can count pick spot zones twice. You can count pick spot zones again. Basically now, if Sharkbite wants to, they can just counter pick. They can just counter pick spot zones on a different map. That is true. <laughs> they could. Uh, so if they feel like that that wasn't their fullest potential, uh, they absolutely could go that way. Uh, um, but. I, I don't think it's going to go that way necessarily. Um, you know, it, it, it's you don't often see uh, teams counterpicking to the mode that they just lost on. Um, they'll, they'll typically try to steer it somewhere else. And if it ultimately ends up back in that same mode, um, you know, you'll you'll they'll go ahead and pick the pieces up from there. Um, so looks like they are still trying to decide this one. But um, I guess the pick is in now. So they have confirmed it. It will be Tower Control Inkblot Art Academy. Uh, surprisingly, first time we've seen this one today. Yeah, because who really, how many people remember Splatoon 2 with this map? Honestly, a lot of people are going, <laughs> so many people are in the Splatoon 3 mindset that they go for a different map mode. They go for Rainmaker mostly because this is Splatoon 3, the most aggressive game in Splatoon. Rather than playing Stalemate and they playing Staggered with Tower Control, they need to play a little bit. They need to have a little bit of patience. So for right now, we're going to be seeing, hopefully this is going to be the advantage of Shark Bites with the Ball Boy from Luna, with the Wolf of Minky. They're going to be having a lot of sneaks. Yeah, certainly. So let's take a look. It seems like these teams are more or less rocking the same comp. Um, so it's they're just going to go ahead and run it back. They said, hey, you know, these are the weapons that work for us. We've just got to make sure that we execute at this stage. Yeah, definitely. Does. And if we go and see it by now, Samea on the duelies, the ball point on the side. Oh. Uh, each spot lands right now. They're just going to be playing 1-1 against the Wolf, who loses against Inki. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that's going to kind of be the, the key piece here uh, for really both of these teams is is playing around this roller. Um, you know, you, you want the roller to kind of take the lead if you are Shark Bites, uh, but you need to be calling out that roller every step of the way if you are each flat lands, as they will get this first checkpoint. Crabbing your bats is definitely not what you want to see if you are Shark Bites. Uh, so they are going to go ahead and push this one out of the way. Uh, finally going to pick off the duelies. This push should be done, but they are already halfway to the checkpoint. It's really good that the crowd was actually survived a little bit and were able to roll out of the Booyah Bomb. So they were able to jump up for a little bit, but again, it didn't matter because they got killed off either way. But for the side of Shark Bites, again, it's still time to push once again past the 97. Them gonna be have Enki actually be established and ready to play off at Samia. It's just getting that jump scare. <laughs> it's gonna be huge. Um, but with no support of the team, actually, it's not gonna be a really crucial as before. But another ball, Booyah coming off on the side of the sneak instead of nearby the checkpoint, it's gonna be a little bit of a dwindling play. Again, for the side of East Bats, we see them all together, but they're playing all together against Chuck Bites as well, so mostly it's going to be who gets the first kill off the long range who's going to get killed off their aggro. Yeah, and with that jump out there as well, send, sending the VP back. Um, this, oh my gosh. Well, okay, never mind. Oh my gosh. I was going to say, this, this, this 
This should be an East Flatlands push, but no. Uh, that was a domino effect there. <laughs> oh, so now this should be Shark Bite's uh, first true opportunity to push this tower. Should clear the first checkpoint relatively uh, with ease. And now the question will be, can they get the lead? But there looks like to be some pressure from behind. Ooh. And that's a wipe out. A huge play to pinch the tower and force everyone back to spawn. Papa and Mutton able to live on on the Papa, but they do have cooler. So they were able to live it up like that, but can that's gonna be kill off on both sides to have that kind of off the roller. The ink jet going into play, they're gonna be killing off the check, but most likely the Trizuka going to go into play a little bit. The Julius getting cut off by the slash machine. Oh my gosh, do have is this gonna just be a one v one mask gone set for checkpoint? <laughs> yeah, uh, this, this uh, each of these team fights that, that are going on here have just been so juicy so far. I mean, it's just multiple players going down on either side. It is an absolute bloodbath for these teams every time that they engage. And if, if every single time someone barely comes out on top and gets a push going as a result. Uh, but the question continues to be, can they get any more points off of this shark fights will but it's not enough to get the lead yet but they are sniffing it at this point it is within reach they just need to get one more good push off and the lead should be theirs but first they need a huge defensive stop here defensive stop and one good push it is for the side i'll try but for east fast line down one single thing like you said about one cup punch is going to be happening right now. With two down on the side of the truck one again. No punch is going to play other than try to is going to be ready on the side of these fast to punch up and get cut off. Samaya so going in just with solo play. Getting one, almost getting a second, but that's going to be enough chip down for it to get three Ooh. down on the side of shark fights with the Trisuka coming in action. Yeah, and Eat Splatlands is trying to put this one completely out of reach. Might not even give Shark Bites an opportunity to get one more push in. As they are all the way up in their goal, and this one should be done, barring a miracle from Shark Bites. And that is it. Eat Splatlands will take this set 2 0. So that's going to be another win on the side of Eat Splatlands. Another Shark. Another little bit of food to feast on as they go for an exit going to maybe i think in the top 10 now uh possibly um <laughs> so of course uh ladder changes every second <laughs> of every day um so starting to you know and especially right now since we're in that weird um we're in that weird stage right now where Teams are starting to get to, to five sets played, um, so we it, you just can't tell. Like the the, the the top eight doesn't mean anything at this stage. Mm. <laughs> it's who can play the fastest sets, um, and and this this I mean East Flatlands did make that game too. They tried to speed it up a little bit at the end there. Yeah, but you might know something. That this match was actually crucial for the side of Spotlands versus Shark Bites because Spotlands is now 35th and Shark Bites are 36th. <laughs> <laughs> no way. <laughs> they are. That, that's what that's what happened with the last time I checked before the before the results actually does refresh and we see the new scores coming in. <laughs> Bagel still always six, but going into the eighth spot because they got oh. Did they get, because they kept on getting sweep, but still getting into the to the top eight because of that single reason. So you have Magmum going one and four and going into the top eight because he was speed running pretty quick. Two and three by Baja, by Baja Blast because he was sneaking in two matches pretty quickly. Flashpoint, Dark Stop, Miss Q, Almond Nuts, and Origami Dragons are the big names to worry about though, for real, as you have in. They, uh, they have the win ratio to their advantage and making it to the top 5. But matter of opinion, World Circulants and Super Team 5 are technically the people who will be in the top 8, actually. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's, what, 6? Yep, so I think you named, uh, you know, most of the teams that are still perfect here. So yeah, um, at least my records indicate 6 teams 
that uh, still have perfect records. So the key thing for them now is just, first of all, make sure that you get your five matches in um because then that will propel you right to the top of the leaderboard uh so that's that's priority number one for for those six teams that are still perfect um but otherwise you know continue to grind out these sets uh as we approach the halfway mark now in this ladder uh we have you know origami dragon and matter of opinion here on deck now, this is an important match right here for seeding because all Grand Dragons has been 4 and 1. They lost the perfect to one of the matches before, but for my opinion, they're still in the perfect era. This qualifies them to go into top 8 for my opinion. If they do win, they are going to get first place. If they don't, they are still going to be qualifying, but they're going to be nearby in the, in the 2 to 7 range because of that loss if they do get it. Certainly. Um, yeah, Origami Dragon uh, definitely wants to put a stop to Matter of Opinion's perfect run here um, to give them a little bit of a boost as well. You know, start start to look into some possible tiebreakers, maybe if, you know, you happen to end up with the same record at the end. Um, so, you know, this this is a very, very important matchup for sure, as you know, we are talking about two top 10 teams right now. Yeah, and also as well, we're going to be going confirmly into the map of Splatstones, Barnacle and Diamond as the first match, which is going to be actually the new big one map that's going to be in December. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, Splatstones B&D, you know, there's been, uh, th 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 this has proven to kind of be a chaotic map mode. Um, definitely not what I th thought when this map mode first came out. Uh, but I mean, we've we've seen some crazy stuff happen time and time again here specifically. So, uh, well, let's go ahead and dive on into this one. And these are some weapons. <laughs> these are definitely some weapons on the side of the green. On the side of matter of opinion, we see the brother, we see the jazz crotch. We're going to be seeing like an update two days, like two updates ago, as a cop for them for the side. Of Oregon Giants, we see the huge wall, the game old 952 Gal, we see the ball point, we see the shot, and we see the end zap. Again, playing for aggressive more than paint. Yeah, uh, gonna be a couple of quick picks here uh, early on, but this zone back and forth uh, to kick things off. Uh, cool, are gonna be hopped out here by Danny now. Uh, trying to get their teammates juiced up and back into action. Oh, a nice quick pick there. Uh, barely peeking, oh. almost like a charger uh, to pick that one off. And this zone might be flipped. No, this Inkjet is going to continue to just hold on, but going to get called out. But hey, that's why, hey, that's why that umbrella is so useful and that kit works so well because you're not going to get camped on those recalls. It's called a quick escape, quick jump for reason with the with the Tuvala Bella. But in the chance of right now, again, we see on Oregon Black, the aggressiveness coming to play. So they will be able to cap the zone and able to actually cut off the checkpoint to dwindle points on their ladder. But for right now, on the side of Matter of Opinion, the Jets are going to come out with the back soon enough. They're going to have to go coming out just for response once they drop into the mid. Which is a yeah. as well. Yeah, and uh, now trying to use this back as well, but you really can't back this killer whale. Gonna survive it though. And this should be a neutralization of the zone plus the flip on top of that pick. Uh, and now this will be a matter of opinion's opportunity to strike back and try to, you know, really take back this lead here, force the lockout, see if you can do it just a little bit better than the Origami Dragons. Uh, and so far, it looks pretty good for them. Yeah, they don't flip, they don't trip, or they don't even dip into the base for, for, for the side of for the side of my opinion right now. But all going drag they're gonna be a little bit of dwindling. They're going to be trying to come back a little bit, but they killed off by the ball and they get killed off by the 52. The Trizuka gonna be coming out as well, but gonna be jumping out immediately because they're gonna be in a solo play. They tripped a little bit. That's what happened. Yeah, and this one is starting to get out of reach. I don't know if they have enough time to get back into this one. They kind of just have to go at this stage, try to get a quick pick and dive into the zone. And they oh. will get control somehow, oh but it's my. a one-person oh. army. So, 
unfortunately uh, for Orgog Dragon, a good effort there, but matter of opinion, is going to go ahead and take game number one in what was kind of a showcase on, you know, trying to see which team could lock out uh, a little bit better. Matter of opinion, dots their uh, I's and crosses their T's here. So, in that scenario for lockouts, we most likely will not see anything of zones, we're not, we're not going to see anything of clan blitz, we're mostly going to be seeing Rainmaker or Tower Control coming on the side of Orgama Dragons, and most likely not on the toe, because that is a camp up map as well. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, have, we'll have to see here, uh, you know, what, what they ultimately decide to go with. Um, you know, on, on, I'm, okay, I actually have no idea what the, the map pool is. I did not get a good chance to look at that. Um, <laughs> so, so I, I, I can't propose, um, you know, what, what, you know, what direction you could possibly go here. Uh, so let, you know, let, let's fix that. Let me, let me pull that one up real quick. Um, yeah. <laughs> cause, cause there's, there's 20 different map modes that we could possibly see. Well, I guess, you know, can't, can't see, uh, B and D, uh, spot zones again, but, yeah. um, so 19 different map modes that we could possibly see here. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know, uh, Jordan, where, where do you, you know, if you are in this position right now, you know, what what is your instinct? Where do you go? Okay, in this position, because we know about the cap up, we know about the back and forth, spot zones could be a play, but again, dwindling a bit, a little bit of a mentality playing on zones, you mostly wouldn't want to avoid that. Clan Pits is going to be an RNG kind of map, but again, because of, you know, persistence and maybe synergy as well. It could be that for clan bits, they want to go for the, for the cheese, so it mostly would be an avoidance on Barnacle Dime. But for Crab Lake Central, there's going to be a new map. Power Fitch is going to be an OG kind of map. But for Tower Control, though, it would be really good for a stalemate. It's going to be really good for patience. They have the backlines in play. They will want to play over on that, and they do have a slot machine. For the side of all Grand Dragons, they have... They actually have less range than Matter of Opinion, but for Matter of Opinion, they have less aggression than Orgam Jack naturally. So this next mapping tag to Mako will decide if aggression or patience with Rage will be playing off the best. For sure. Well, um the counter pick here, Tower Control Mako Mart. Um so that's gonna that's gonna be the play uh first time we will see this one today on stream. Uh so you know, definitely another another classic. I feel I feel like we really just haven't seen Tower Control Mako Mart as much uh, recently. You know, of course, you know we have spot zones, and I feel like we've been playing a lot of uh, clan blitz on Mako Mart. But you know, Tower Control still still very solid. We just you know don't see it too too much as of uh, you know past couple months. Yeah, past couple of months because the new maps always come into play, but also if we haven't seen Waymaker so much on the stream, we should get more Waymaker games on here. <laughs> I know we got Rainmaker Scorch and haven't and haven't been back since. So, <laughs> um, but for now it is TC Mako Mart jumping into this one. Uh, it looks like uh, Matter of Opinion is going to be sticking with the same comp pretty much that they ran in that last one. Origami Dragons changing it up a little bit, bringing out that uh, range blast. I believe. Yeah, as you can see with the jet on the back coming back and play again, they can just full on have the cone of invincibility on the tower so they don't need to worry about anything from the flash charge with chip damage because it's going to just suck them all up. We can see two down on the side of Matter Opinion, three down on the side of Matter Opinion, going to go to the first shot point with the shot all the way at the back, but the, actually that's going to be the ball point getting cut off. And for the side of, you know, the other team, they can't really play and can play anything against Matter Opinion, killing off the first checkpoint already. Yeah, and I mean, matter of opinion here, looking real strong to start this game. I mean, even stronger than they did uh, ending the previous game. Like this, this is going bad fast if you are Origami Dragons. Uh, trying to get a couple more picks here to slow down this tower push, but somehow the members of Matter of Opinion just won't go down, and it's going to instead be oh. Origami Dragons that see themselves getting wiped, and this is where I call the oh no zone. This is where things start to get really ugly if you're on the defensive end, and things become very, very difficult to get a stop, and it looks like they're going to oh. try to force this tower through seven points remaining, five points remaining. Wolf gonna get a couple of nice picks. Wolfie. And I mean a knockout. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. The Wii specials each from Azuka and the fat coming to, from the side of matter opinion. If not even having the momentum of not having Orgami Dragons to get on the zone, even touch it a little bit till the end, before Orgami Dragons getting picked off, getting soloed all the way in the corner, getting soloed all the way in the back, getting tripled from Wolfie at the end. Going to be leading matter opinion to get 2 0. Yeah, I. I. Jory, I don't, I don't know about you, but. Um, to me, that's what a, a team that wins lottery looks like. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, they, they put on a show here and executed to near perfection. Uh, you know, game one took them a minute to get their footing there, but I mean, you. You took the Origami Dragons down like they were Little Timmy and the Splats. Like that, that's how good that looked from matter of opinion. And that's that's nothing against Origami Dragons. You know, they played uh, a couple of those possessions pretty well. And it seemed like for a moment there that they finally got matter of opinion off the tower and were getting ready to formally respond there. But matter of opinion just looked that good and that i think this is going to be your team to watch out for as uh they remain perfect here um it seems like uh if i hit the the refresh i think there's still uh you know part of that group of six teams that are still perfect the difference maker now is that they are the only team that has played at least five sets and are perfect yeah so Saying about on the side of Origami Dragons, what happened to them is they didn't play for a little bit. So they were able to dwindle on their skill. So that's the reason why if you stop playing, you lose a little bit of momentum. For the side of of the team who won, that's going to be my opinion. They kept on grinding. Like they started a little bit late, but they kept on grinding. And that's how they won in the first half. And talk about the perfect as well. Royal Circle and Clamity Force Neo, Super Team 5, Crescent Knight. And Alliance Moon in the top 25 with four no scores and three no scores it's the only ones alive with perfect so far but all that matters now is going to be the top 10 who actually qualified for five for five matches who is going to be right now the only one with perfect is matter of opinion everyone else lost a set yeah uh so matter of opinion they as if they keep up this momentum um yeah, they should be a big favorite. Uh, but again, you need to keep playing. You get five and oh, I, I think that's, you know, you'll be able to stick around the top eight uh, if for some reason you choose to, to stop playing. Um, but, you know, you you need to just play more sets for security because, uh, you know, there there's been teams that uh in other ladder events that you know you you go like six and one but uh you don't make top cut because there's eight other teams that uh are like seven and one or even seven and two that are gonna get in on that uh win loss differential um yeah just because they they've played more um so if you're a matter of opinion i think you got to keep going here um, Origami Dragons for sure uh, need to keep going as well as they are now four and two. Uh, but you know they've they've been playing pretty well today uh, from the looks of it. They just need to keep going and uh, you know off the back of two losses here, shake it off, get yourselves back in it because uh, you've beaten a couple of other teams that we've seen in this top t uh, top eight at one point or another. Yeah, and as you talk about the top 8 or top 10 as well, we see now as we press refresh a little bit to see if anything changes, but it doesn't look like to be anything. Blue Velvet, Almond Nuts, Miss Q, Orgum, Dragons, Kiwi Ice Cream, Double Trouble, Siege White, and Flash Boy is in your top 10, but there's a certain team that didn't say because that's going to be actually the match coming up right next. This is going to be the Luminous Kelpies versus Pucka Up Posture Pufferfish. Oh, okay, okay. So, so uh, luminous kelpies. Um, so, if if I have that correct, um, I believe that is uh, uh, dear friend Wolf um, that captains that team. Uh, Wolf, uh, you know, an amazing uh, member of the community who does all sorts of toing um, and 
uh, maybe may, may a little bit too much TOing, but uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, hopefully they're here playing the video game today uh, to you know have some fun. Uh, uh, also, uh, you know, I believe Six is on this team as well. So uh, you know, this 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 should be a, a fun group. I reckon I recognize quite a few names here. Yeah, if it's uh, Miss Pixie Six, it's going to be definitely a really fun match to see on the top two seeing them play it off. Definitely on the side of Wolf playing a shot. If I remember correctly from last time they played, and uh, Six are going to be playing that support role, if I do remember as well. But for the side of Pucka, uh, Puppet Bears, they are a new team. They do have a two to one win lose ratio right now, which is going to be leaving them in thirty fourth. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So, um, so, so wait. This is so definitely not. Uh, I, you know, I guess. Okay, they're two and one. I guess the records are similar enough because I'm like, if they're that low to leaderboard, like, how did Battlefy match them up? But, um, but no, it, they're, they're two and one. It, they're just that low because of the uh, win loss differential. Like, they're 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 doing all they're doing all right for themselves right now. Um, so it is technically similar record. Luminous Kelpies just have two more wins under their belt. Um, so but, <clears throat> hoping to, to get this one uh, going soon-ish, but um, still still, still looking for that lobby, it seems like. <laughs> um. <laughs> if you want to know another thing as well, remember, this is not Star to GG for Speed Ladder, this is Battlefy. So rules can be different this time. That with a whole team pool, you don't go pool with different sections of, of nearby your skill. You might get pulled with anyone random at this point, which might be happening actually right now of who comes with first come first serve. And that's why this might be happening with Lumen's Kelpies for Puck of Puppetfish. It's going to be in a two to one scenario if it's a four to one scenario. But for right now, though, again, Lumen's Kelpies on paper seems to be the better one, but for Puck of uh, Pufferfish, they have two to one, so they have one win advantage. But I guess who is the question? Well, let's answer that. Um, so let's let's pull it up real quick. Uh, Puck or Pufferfish, um, looks like they got a one two loss against Royal Succulents, uh, a two one win over Eat Splatlands, and a two zero victory over two seven six three. So, uh Royal Succulents and Eat Splatlands. I mean, we both we, we saw both of them earlier and both teams. Uh, sorry, we saw Eat Squidlands, uh, Eat Splatlands earlier. Wow, <laughs> the talking is difficult sometimes. And uh, oh, Royal yeah. Succulents, we've consistently been seeing in that top 10. Um, so, you know, being able to take a game off Royal Succulents, I mean, that's a pretty good indicator. So if if i'm the luminous copies you know you you can't read too much into the record you need to look at those matches because it's like hey taking a game off royal succulents who are now five and oh like that's pretty good um hmm. so they there's if one thing goes different you know it's very well could have been a 3-0 team uh so it's just hey this this team is just trying to get these uh, matches in at this stage uh but they're they're gonna definitely be a team to kind of watch out for here going into game number one splat zones mako mart hmm with splat zones of mako mart this is going to be really a chance that we saw them out wait we saw them out before so like we can't really say anything about it other than playing defense the bowl if they have anything the bubble is going to be helpful on strizukas and missiles as well if they play something like reflex uh reflux but really on the side of you know, puck a pup, puck a, a pup of fish. They automatically readied. Yeah, uh, <laughs> so they got a game plan. Um, they they know exactly what weapons they're playing. Uh, on on the side of the luminous kelpies, uh, we have negative Toby six and Traveler in here. Uh, puck a puff of fish. Uh, it's gonna be. I'm gonna say Mogi, Karma, <laughs> uh, Cerebellum, and Lumi. Uh, so those are going to be the starting rosters for this set as everybody readies up. So let's dive on in. Game number one, Splat Zones Mako Mart. Yeah. Seeing from all the banners and anything, we didn't really see that much difficult, but we do see a Tetris coming out on the side of Puck of Puffervich. We see the Junior coming out from negative on the side of... Oh, guys, I forgot the name. Lewis Cuppies. So, the junior who with the side of negative on Lewis Cuppies is going to be big bubbles on the side on his own. Hmm. 
Yeah, definitely an interesting composition for sure. I mean, going with the uh, with the clock shooter here uh, for the Luminous Kelpies. Uh, gonna be interesting to see how this one plays out. I mean, you know, Junior Zap with the double support. Uh, so th th the name of the game, I guess, for them is just Ink. Ink as much as physically possible. <laughs> It is. It is basically. It's basically took over a bigger. But the cancel on the beef side by a bomb on the side of the negative is pretty huge right there. The junior trying to one v one and but getting cut off the tries to go instead, and that's going to be aggression on the side of the limited copies to go up higher, going to the base to enough. We're going to be seeing aggro junior instead of oh. supportive junior on the side of limited copies. And look at how much blue ink there is on this map now. The, this this is the game plan here. It, all they needed was to get the effective wipeout. Uh, and that is just going to make it so difficult now for uh, the... Fish. 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 There we go. I, both these teams' are, names are too long. Uh, <laughs> uh, to, to move around here. Uh, and there, it looks like they might be running away with this when the Tetris trying to make a diving play onto the zone. They will get the neutral, trying oh. to force the flip. And here it is. That uh, reef slider should open things up. And yes, there it is. Puff Rep, Puffka Fish by themselves. Another couple minutes in this game. Uh, at the right moment, Tetris coming in with a huge play. The Puffka Fish coming got back and forth, coming into the beach. Like she's getting the kill off the off the chopper the bomb itself on the bubble that's going to be just an eye for an eye on the side of the junior players but for right now again we see see the zone on side of the kelpies waiting for a little bit having the having the actual penalty getting lower than 40 now because of the reach up of the zone but still so much battle so much pain on the zone tries to get going off on either side but mostly on the kelpies first and then now it's going to be on the puffer fish trying to go in from the snipe cancel on the junior by the ball point Oh, a nice pick there, and it looks like someone's kind of caught out in the corner there. Toby, try and trying to just oh. sneak out. If I stand still long enough, they won't see me, and it looks like it will pay off with a pick there, but not going to be able to find anything on top of that. Uh, so a valiant effort nonetheless, as the Kelpies continue to hold on to the zone. It is just negative on the junior against two other members. Make it three now, trying to get some jump-ins as well but Pufferfish will pick up control of this zone and are trying to get themselves much closer in the scoreboard. I don't know if the shot has come back or something, but as we saw the shark waiting for a little bit, the passive special uh, in income was actually dwindling a little bit, so they were just maybe waiting for a little bit of a Trizuka to go for a sneak if they waited for that long, waiting for the LDE coming to play actually. As the score lowers on the side of the Pufferfish going down to 37, when another tries to come out, killing the Junior right when they pop on Bubble. But, you know, 6 is with the Zap is going to be trying to go into a 3v1 scenario as a distraction. But still, we need to see how the Kelpies actually gather up and battle against in paint. But with 6 being gone, it might not be that helpful. Oh, and I mean, this This suddenly turned into a very interesting game here as Toby trying to get a pick on the BP, able to get it. Uh, actually, with the assist of her teammate, Don't and that's going to be a clutch wipeout to save the lead. What a play by the Luminous Kelpies. Killing off the whole team of Pucka Puck Fitch, who was on his own, just in the nick of time to get the, to get the paint back. Another kill on Toby. With the tries to come into play, trying to go for another one, trying to go for even two for chip damage, walking the team with the bubble coming to play in their own base. Oh my gosh, negative, what are you doing here? Oh, yeah, no, you, this is not what you want to see. Oh, wait, what? How did... <laughs> they, they went there. The Tetras, the Tetras on the Reef Slider forced the zone flip. Probably Wait. with the Reef Slider and a, maybe a pick on top of it. What a play there to try to extend this one. Uh, buy their team just a little bit more time when things were looking grim. And now we're two down on the side of the Kelpies. This could be an opportunity for Pufferfish to get one more go at the zone. Sneak attack goes wild with the Reef Slider, honestly. That is a crazy little thing that he did. But now they have capitalized on the zone again. Will they be able to actually lock down and kill the Cooler, kill the Junior, kill the Shot in the matter of with second, with one second, uh, with one second left, it's now an OT. Oh, and this oh. one's not gonna last as the Kelpies had four specials online. They played patiently and said, Hey, 
Let them have it. We got this. Build up those specials and we will put an end to it. And that is exactly what they did there to secure game number one. All failed and loved of Trizookas. Yep. <laughs> Kelpies get the first map. Oh, what what a good back and forth showdown there. I mean, it looked like the, the Kelpies were going to run away with this one, but Pufferfish made it interesting. They were scrappy and said, we are not going down without a fight. And a fight they put up indeed. Uh, just seemed like it was a little bit too little too late as the Kelpies built up that notable lead early. Uh, but Pufferfish just were scrapping and crawling their way back into that one but came up short by inches Puppetfish had adaption it was running a little bit too late but they have adaption so now going to the counter pick which we're going to be figuring out soon it's going to be really decisive or really hard to figure out what they want to do next because they are equally matched yeah uh, these two teams definitely are, you know, pretty evenly matched. I mean, uh, you know, Kelpies, the name of the game in that one was just get ink down. Uh, as if they can ink, then they can move. The other team can't. And we will be able to get, you know, whatever picks as a result, e even with, you know, sort of a two support system there. I think the NZAP definitely trying to take more of an aggro role. Um, as the junior just, con I mean, I don't know. The junior also seemed a bit like a battle junior too, because uh, they were all over the place, you know, trying to find picks, getting behind people. So, uh, I mean, that was wildly entertaining. But I mean, Pufferfish definitely had a fair bit of ink to try to counter that, um, you know, and also a little bit more range. So they, I think, you know, just need to kind of find a way to piece this one together a little more, as they have decided. Rainmaker, Scorch Gorge, Jorian. We asked for Rainmaker. We receive Rainmaker. Yeah, we finally got Mimi once again, and same with the Battle Union once again, it's gonna be huge on a side of negative playing that off because they can just auto cap it with two bombs with Object Shred. You better have an Object Shred negative, I'm calling you out if you don't. Like, bro, that's free <laughs> pop right there with the rest of your team with so many suction bombs and so many pain. It's gonna be huge for you guys on the side of Lumen Cup if you go that and go for the first check on immediately, but again, on the side. Puff of Pish, Puck of Puff of Fish, again, being equally mad, <laughs> being with the different kind of weapon, with different kind of comps, it should be fine. They're going to play playing the pitching game first and then go and go in aggressive nearby the end. Yeah, certainly. I mean, that's what at least I'm anticipating, uh, you know, from them. So we'll we'll have to see, uh, you know, these teams seem to have been reading uh reading up fairly quickly so i don't know I'm, I'm kind of excited to see the the adjustments that they they come out with uh because definitely the the junior zap double shot combo um like in a way it's better but also like not <laughs> <laughs> just just because it's really interesting to kind of have that uh to to support um you know foundation there so we'll we'll have to see what they what they go with but uh, if they do stick with the comp it should work in their favor but i mean let's answer that right now as uh it looks like they're gonna huh? be huh what what uh, what is this comp okay so on the side of lumen's comp we have Jesus, Jesus, C Junior, Sploosh for Hammer, C Junior's gonna be for Vapor, which actually is the better Junior in this kind of mode, if you don't have the Optic Shred, which makes sense, and everything else is still gonna be the same on the side of Lumen's Kelpies, while on the side of Puckle Puffer, we have Tangy Tech, we have Shot, Double Shot, and we have the End Zap, and they're gonna be Captain Zone immediately first. Yeah, I mean, first checkpoint's down. Um, so this, this is very quickly going to be a puffer fish, just avalanche Wait. push here all the way down to 32 in the matter of 40 seconds. That is quite a lot of points and that can very well be a game winning push within the first 40 seconds of this game. They bought past pillow as well. So that's a really based and really good move for them because they didn't stop a pillow because you're automatically going to get killed. They played the risky and they got the wood down a bit. So right now on the side of Puck Up Puff Fit, they just need to keep their aggro up. They just need to stay nearby the snipe, nearby the checkpoint, and then it's all going to be fine for them. They just need to keep on pushing, keep on being aggro, but still getting the double. That's going to be huge, but the hammer's going to be calling them out and waiting for a little bit. Oh. 
Oh, but it gets picked off. And this could be more points on the board for the Pufferfish here as they are looking to inch their way forward. They're going to be slowed down a little bit by this bomb spam and wave breaker. Oh. And they're going to lose two as a result. This push might be done, but uh, it looks like, you know, it looks like they're, they're trying to maintain position here as best they can. Jump's coming in as well. Uh, but no, this 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 one's done. So this will be a reset uh, given a little bit of time here. Uh, but uh, Luminous Kelpie's trying now to undo all of the damage that was just done to them. Toby getting the WB a Luminous in action, being the blinding of light in the battle, and actually going to be taken in the bait, trying to go for a triple, getting the hammer kill off the T-Tech and winning that fight, going to be getting the checkpoint for the side of Luminous Kelpie for, for now what they need to do. They're getting the wood fight back in the brain, and they're actually going to be selling that. They're waiting for Traveler for a jump. Honestly, Traveler, Traveler is going to have a jump point at the fight for Toby. They're going to be wanting for Chaos again. Oh, and Toby survives the jump in and is gonna grab <laughs> the Rainmaker. Oh, that that was a, a, a bold play there. Um, you know, and I, they just want to try to keep it in position, it seems. Um, <laughs> I, Toby, you, you mad lad. <laughs> <laughs> so basic that you just broke the OF. GG, well played. Again, okay, right now, all we need to focus on for either team is going on the grades. We need to find that little sneak point. That little play that's going to be a little bit of a rat and sneak along the grades to actually go for the whole sneak behind and go for KO. But for right now, we're seeing so many fights with mid. We see the t that going off with the tri right? We see Traveler jumping out for no reason at all, but playing for defense on the tri because they do have it you on know, 50%. So that's going to be huge for stopping. Oh, and that's a delayed three down there. It's just the BP. And now the BP goes down. So, Luminous Kelpie's picking up this Rainmaker to Zook. Oh, no. He is able to pick off the Rainmaker right on time because that could have gotten ugly real fast. Oh, a great play, though, to stop this Rainmaker and hold on to a notable lead here still. We saw every time and every stop that Saber was already in the picture. They were always the one getting the kill off with the support of someone else, getting the support of the shot, getting the support of the ball point. They were always there to help out, and that's going to be crucial as we get into the last minute of the game. 59 to 32 remaining. Hammer, shot, Vapor going on the side of Lumis Coffee. Hammer going out and play first. Shots going out in second. Vapor going on in third. It's still on their side though. So the question is, how are they going to play it off if they can't really go up and do the side of Pop Go, Pop Go, Pop Precision Base with this? Yeah, uh, it, they're, they're definitely going to have to, you know, try to, you know, keep up some of the aggression. Uh, but, oh, one down on either side now. Uh, Toby once again trying to dive on in. Going to somehow survive. I mean, to Toby it just seems to be one of those players where... The objective is to be a thorn in the side of the other team, uh, and is doing a fantastic job of it so far. Although it hasn't, you know, resulted in a lead flip yet. Uh, with this end zap going down now, it certainly could mean something. But the BP playing patiently, trying to hold on to that inkjet for his final push. But the, but it's gonna go down, and now it's just the shot from behind, trying to see if anyone from the companies notices it. Yes, they do. They're going to go ahead and try to uh, stop this one. Oh. But slips on through and I think that that was a pinch there to take down the Rainmaker and tie this setup at one apiece. Jorian, we are finally going to our game three. It's been like an hour and we finally get game three. It's a save from the sack. Oh wait, oh wait. But still, the save from the zap. I think if I remember correctly. Oh, the, it was either the zap or the ball point. Getting the kill off the Rainmaker and bringing it to the game three. Mm hmm. So, uh, hey, this, we, we kind of came into this one saying, though, that of all the sets we've seen so far, if this, if we were going to finally get a game three, this is where it's going to happen. Uh, just because both of these teams, uh, have some solid results so far, uh, playing, you know, a solid group of opponents. Uh, you know, we talked about, um, who, who, who was it? Royal Succulents, um, yep. you know, winning in three games against the pufferfish here uh the luminous kelpies as well uh have you know played five sets so far um you know have taken a loss to crescent knight but uh you know pretty much cleanly sweeping the rest of their opponents uh sheer cold 
Femboys United, Continuous Virtue, uh, going to three games against Double Trouble as well, uh, who we saw up on the leaderboard earlier. Um, so <clears throat> definitely uh, two really good teams here that are going to continue to to fight their way through, uh, although uh, both certainly still have a ways to go now to get back into that top eight, uh, as we now are seeing a lot more teams come in here uh, to the leaderboard. 4-1, 5-1, 6-0. So for Luminous Kelpies, they really need this one to, to maintain a spot on that mm. top eight. Yeah, for the title, Luminous Kelpies going for the team against Femboy United. <laughs> Funny name. Uh, going up and gets this high, but again, battling a two to one team. Paka Paka Fish, who lost against uh, who lost against War Cyclones, but got two but got win against two six seven eight, and got win and got two one two loss against East Flatlands, who is in the top twenty so far. Is really good, and they are tough competition. And with this score as well, it's going to be bumping them up higher in the rankings, maybe up to maybe the top 20 as well for Buck Up Up Rich if they do win this. But either way, in the match points of how many games you actually played, it does matter for both ends. Well, Luminous Calpy is going to be up there either way. Either way, win or lose, they're going to be still in that like area of top 16, most likely. But as you were saying about the whole 6 0, 5 1s, 4 1s is coming to that era of when teams has to wash up and try to go for 3 2 0s. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, it, it is the final hour. So, yes, speed is an important factor as well. How fast can you get through these sets? Because uh, I think, that, you know, definitely not as many sets being played as I, I think, uh, at least I was anticipating uh, at, at this point. I thought we would have seen a couple more teams have, have already reached seven, but uh, six seems to be the maximum so far. Um, uh, other than, oh, no, you know, actually, no, there's, there's a couple teams that have hit their seventh. Um, but, but it looks like, yeah, that's going to kind of be the, the leading mark here. So... Definitely, uh, speed is still of the utmost importance because you need to still hit that five match threshold to even qualify, possibly qualify for a top cut spot. Uh, but these teams are ready to roll. It is tower control ship shape to decide uh, who wins the set and really, you know, put themselves in a much better position for a top eight spot. What are we seeing from these comps here? From the 14th placements of the Luminous Copies, we see the Junior, we see the Shaw, double shot, and ends up coming back into play on Tower Control, on Sip Shape, over on the side of Parker Buffet Fish. We're going to be seeing double shot again, Ballpoint and Sense App, the same thing that they've been playing all along this whole set. Yeah, uh, Kelpie's switching back to that game one composition that really helped them win that particular game on splat zones with tower control though it's gonna be a little bit different with the same composition you're gonna have to play it a little different because it's not just all about getting ink on the ground because uh the objective is not necessarily ink based uh so so far though it does look like that the pufferfish are able to you know capitalize on this be a little bit more aggressive and are riding this tower all the way to the second checkpoint and things are starting to spiral out of control for the kelpies as the second checkpoint is cleared and they're trying to just avoid a knockout now do they have the slapper shirt on i just noticed sorry just don't six have like a hog shirt on and travel too a part of the team uh, oh no, they don't have it, but I noticed that someone has this black shirt on, so they might have a little bit of ability issue, but who knows. Uh, as we see the defense on the side of, you know, for uh, Luminous Copies. Yeah, Luminous Copies <laughs> are going out to a good defense, and there is slapage going on on such side of six. Someone might have forgot their shirt, so there might be a little bit of a weird disadvantage on the side of Luminous Copies, but no matter, they have aggression. They're going to play game one once again like they did before. They're going to be captaining you out. They're going to be going with the aggro junior. They're going to be with double shot. They're going to go with Zuka. They're going to go all crazy. All savage as they go for the first checkpoint. Yeah, um, so they, they have a very tall mountain to climb, but we, we've seen the Kelps do a good job of, you know, 
holding on to objective uh, previously. So, oh, but this, it's gonna have to kind of be a slow grind here as Toby is continuing to play oh. from behind. Oh, that, watching Toby is honestly such a treat. I mean, you just never know where where this where this player is gonna be. Uh, to, Toby could be behind you, in front of you, to left you, to right of you, above you, below you. I mean, like you 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 really need to keep calling out Toby because. Um, that, that that's what's I think Toby like is going to be the key here for the Kelpies and look at Toby coming up with another flank here and it's just the VP and they're gonna try to cause some hassle here and this is the Kelpies opportunity they're gonna give it a go Toby trying to play from behind again the, the dive onto the tower it's not gonna be any good the ends up goes down oh. on the side of Kelpies but Toby goes down Toby's gonna try to force this checkpoint and get some jump in the inkjet coming out as well Toby gonna continue to stay alive oh. you're finally gonna get shut jumps. down 16 points for Manny negative jumping in they're trying to keep this push alive but I, I think they're gonna have to back off on this one but no negatives turn to get toby back <laughs> it's, it's the battle at all of the world right here on the side of numerous cups that they make it down to actually 16 it's going to be a huge score a minute 30 seconds left though so anything could happen the tower is going back straight back to mid again it's safe for right now popping up pop, pop, a little bit frazzled right now as he's trying to recover from what happened going down to 16 just in a blink of an eye but for right now again these they actually recovered they're going to be trying to call out Kelpie, uh, they're going to be trying to call out Toby. Seva is going to be trying to aggress head head against them for sure. But for right now, Bubble coming into play. The tower is not moving because it's not on the tower. Actually, it's going to be on the snipe. So everyone can play defense on it instead. No one's battling the ball point though. They need to kill them off so they can start first push. Yes, that is, I 100% agree with that. The, the getting this ball point down is going to be the oh. key thing for the Luminous Kelpies. Uh, because you, no one's going to be able to really touch uh, that inkjet. Uh, or just the, the, the straight up range there of the BP. Uh, if, you know, they're going to get a solid push going here. As, oh, it's Cerebellum that's going to come up with a triple here. And now is trying to push up. This tower is on the move. They're going to try to displace this as far as physically possible and make the Luminous Kelpies take this coast to coast if they want to win and continuing to get them staggered. They're not even interested in the tower at this point. They're going to just hold forward and see if they can lock them out, see if they can prevent the, the Kelps from oh. reaching the tower at all. Cerebellum still dancing around. Finally, he's going to get shut down here. And that is a delayed wipe. Now, it's going to be Karma here on the defensive front, trying to stop this tower. The tower on the move, passing that first checkpoint. Popping out the inkjet though, trying to come up with a couple picks, not able to do so. Two players down on the side of the fish, and now it's the what, tower's six? loose. It's gonna be the oh. shot of the tower, not gonna be able to get it. The tower's Luby. gonna be Luby coming up with a double to save the game for the pufferfish and take the set. Sailor <laughs> was just dancing, it was just dancing, playing like a junior player that negative show had done, but at the end of the day, Lumi. Raining a little bit on the tower while everyone else winding tower on Lumen's Kelsey on Lumen's Kelpies waiting for a little bit, trying to panic a little bit, banging on the 16 and making it all the way to the end, getting to get wet, getting killed off. Oh my gosh, and they had a, and they had a fist bump as well. Uh <laughs> GG Sa GG 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 the streaming streaming play on Lumi, I think that was that. GG's well played. You guys did really well. <laughs> And that fist bump between uh, Lumi and Cerebella, very well deserved uh, indeed, as though those two were the ones that come up with the clutch plays. Cerebella with a triple and just running circles around the Luminous Kelpies uh, to really create a distraction and slow down that push as much as possible. And then Lumi with the game saving play to dive onto the tower right in the nick of time to secure the win, uh, well deserved. Uh, what an entertaining set. Definitely the best set we've had so far on stream today. Uh, as the Pufferfish now move up to three and one. Still need to get another set in to even qualify for a uh, top cut spot. Uh, but the Pufferfish are on their way. Pufferfish underdogs on the way to victory soon enough. Well, we've seen them mostly coming in, mostly hopefully they get 
quick 2-0 so they can get into the top 10 as you see right now my opinion alliance moon being 6-0 5-0 alliance moon for the my opinion is most likely happening right now as we speak because they need to get the type off the way my opinion's first game might be dropped off against alliance moon who never came before well but now coming back now and stronger than ever after they'll lose the season i think in playoffs as well but for miss Hugh, blue velvet moon sun water cyclist velvet sky and comedy for neo they're still alive in the top eight they never came here for a while for climbing for neo they took a little bit of break same with two team five but they came back velvet sky blue velvet one thing to note as well for their looty playoffs history they are in playoffs but in different sides of the bracket ah fascinating well, yeah. Uh, man, I, I'm a little bit out of breath from that one. Uh, a very intense ladder set. <laughs> you scream so but, hard, man. Oh, hey, I mean, I get excited. You know, I, I, I can't help it. And, I, and that one, that one was was so so good. Uh, and you know, uh, I am I am now a solid fan of the puffer fish here luminous kelpies uh you know always been a fan of them as well so hey i i, I had to i had to bring it out for uh for those two teams you know but hey we've got two more teams on deck now uh over time who is currently sitting at four and two now going to be taking on kiwi ice cream who sits at three and three so four and two three and three for these two teams that's going to be 19th place versus 24th place kiwi ice cream seeming like they had a little bit of a rough second half so far by right now but for the side of overtime they seem to have a little bit of a luckier two games going uh four and two and this might be actually our last match to comp day before we swap off too yeah, I presume that it will be, uh, you know, kind of given the timing of things here. So um, let's let's hopefully make this one a good one. And then after that, I need to go run and uh, warm up for Ludi. Um, so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to get things kicked off with Splat Zones B and D. Um, so last time we saw this one, it was it was a battle of teams trying to lock out until one finally pulled it off and managed to to uh, completely shut out the other team from getting back to the zone. Uh, that's going to kind of be the story here as well, I would assume. You know, both these teams are uh, going to be kind of grappling in mid until, you know, you get that three down situation and you can really start to lock out the other team and, you know, Hopefully, if you know you're on the offensive, uh, really just keep the other team out and run away with it. Okay. We're going to be seeing the thing. Okay, thank God. Z look actually changed, changed his buffer season to speed. So that's really good. <laughs> the, we, don't see, we don't see the double. Oh, wait, no, someone else has it. Oh, no. No. <laughs> oh, the cl classic tournament jury, you splat fest. <laughs> But yeah, the weapons though. Uh, on the side of overtime, we see the carbon wall from Z. Like we see the, the crab, we see the knight, we see the pencil. It's all going to be more range aggro play. But on the, on the side of the team, we're going to be seeing Tri Slasher, uh, We're going to be seeing Shot. We're going to see Blob. We're going to see Knowledge. We're going to be these double slasher. Yeah, um, you know, definitely some really interesting comps here. I'm actually kind of pretty excited because uh, I, I think this might be the first time we first of all see a tri slosh. I know you you kind of pointed that one out specifically for me, uh, and also the blob. Uh, so oh. first we're gonna see those today as ooh a nice wipeout there. Uh, that could be the go button here for overtime to start pressing up and really get aggressive here try to force the lockout situation this inkjet though trying to also help out um but not gonna be able to find anything so they're they're gonna need to get a pick you yes the blob will get uh the carbon deco and that's gonna be three down there we go responding with a wipeout of their own and now it is kiwi's turn to take control of this zone and see if they can hold this lockout a little bit better with the ball playing right now, with the rain actually coming in action right now, but it's going to be mostly showing up once again sooner or later. They're just waiting on the RNG to just 
play distraction to trying to lead off anyone up over time as far as possible. We see the crack coming in play from Max Sipu on the 96 now. Penta just winning against the shot, if I remember correctly, that was. But they do get the lead on the side of Kiwi Ice Cream. We're just going to see a little bit more delay. Two down on the side of over time. That's going to be three down with the tries. Mm. So getting the kill. Crab's the only one going to be the one thing in life. But how will they come back, Dior? Uh, they're gonna have to build up these specials first and foremost. Uh, the crab's gonna come out now. Uh, it, 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 the kraken's gonna have to come in as well, like as soon as it's ready. And yes, here it comes. Uh, but the others are not ready enough with their specials, as this will be a kiwi ice cream victory here in game number one. Uh, it just seemed like they just did not have. And they were not close enough to those specials, you know, coming out of spawn um, to, to really get anything together in time. Uh, so it's just a bit of an unfortunate uh, situation there. You know, you need to just stay alive in the moment because it just, you know, it, it, there was not enough time for, for them to be able to get back in. They got close. They got pretty close. But, uh, you know, especially when you're kind of in a frenzy like that, it is a little bit easier to punish. And that's exactly what happened there. Hmm, they just got too aggroed on more or less in the TLDR stance against Kiwi Ice Cream. Getting the kills off, getting the doubles, getting the triples off. It just had overtime stagnant and it just stuck on this snowballing type of map. But we have another map coming in play already in our intent from the counter pick of overtime. We need to go on, uh, on until once again. Yeah, Rainmaker on the toe. Um, definitely gonna be interesting to see here, you know, how Overtime responds. Um, it, I, I think this is definitely gonna be, you know, better at, as this one's gonna just be a little, the, the, the pace will slow down a little bit. You don't need to make frantic plays um, like you do on spots of B&D. Uh, so, I, I do just think that this will be a good, just even mental reset from that last game uh, for overtime. Because uh, this one, it, it doesn't go that fast. Um, so you'll give yourself a chance to, to breathe a second, you know, give yourself a chance to find a little more footing there. Because uh, you, you had a good situation in that last game. But again, it's just kind of a back and forth of who can lock out better. Um, I mean, that, that was almost a replica of the exact Splat Sons B&D game we saw earlier. Yeah, but honestly, seeing from overtime with the count pick, I, I like, knowing a bit of ZOF, uh, Z look and Maxi Poo, I kind of expected a little bit more chaos like they did a month ago, because they did Mantam Re on Rainmaker, and I think they got a quick KO from their own cop. Like, they had overpowerment against what they had. They for Mantam Rio or Museum de Fonzino or even Humpback is going to be RNG but I guess Unintel is playing it safe, playing the usual, playing the well known but who knows if, the, if it's going to be for the advantage or not but right now we're going to see if the cops are going to be doing the same it is mostly going to be the same Monk is going to be playing the slot machine this time we're going to see the Nice just coming back we're going to be doing the shot and Zach coming back on the side of Overtime but on the side of Kiwi Ice Cream we're going to be seeing the Tri Blob Zap and shot once again. Hmm, okay, so gonna be uh, sticking with you know what what they ran last time. Um, so I mean it, it worked for them. So you know why why not run it back and uh, at least with that blob as well, gonna get some uh, good damage on the rainmaker barrier as they are gonna pick up this rainmaker, run it down to the first checkpoint. Everybody going down, but the rainmaker finally gonna get shut down there. And Wait. whoa. Couple jumps coming in, they all get punished at the same time. So, this will be an overtime uh, capture of the Rainmaker. They're gonna respond here. Let's see how far they can get it on their first push. I'm surprised that Z-Look actually changed for a shot instead of the Carmen one instead for Primary and trying to go for paint, but that does not sample right now. And we see them getting a double to actually secure the zone, but actually that's gonna be a three down situation by a tri and Ancient on the side of TB Ice Cream's advantage. So they're gonna be pushing up with the Remaker, mostly trying to go for that right path. They might be looking for that as they're gonna be waiting for the two specials to burn out right now. If you see the shot, but have you seen actually try to get from the from the slot machine and the shot coming out? Yeah, uh, this Rainmaker will reset though. Um, so neither team still capturing that first checkpoint over time. 
Gonna give it another go here. Gonna try to lead the way with this Kraken. Uh, trying to open up some space here. Paint that pedestal, uh, the path to the pedestal up a bit, but I think they missed oh. up the Tri Slosher there who was sharking all along. A great play by the Tri Slosher to slow this one down, but numbers still not in their favor. This should be an overtime pickup, uh, but the pressure is still on the defensive end here from uh kiwi uh as they're they're doing a great job of just trying to lock this one out and overtime forces the checkpoint here We're gonna sacrifice their life to do so but hey it gets them the lead and now you have checkpoint advantage look at max who during that whole time during the whole time of them getting lead by zero by four points they were they were getting kill off someone getting kill off two people helping the way to get the advantage of of a little bit of a lead they had in the three minute game that's the remaining but we see on the side of Kiwi going left instead of right that was pretty much open for the whole time but they actually get in by a little sneaky little bit of a squid of action right there but the whole pop on the side of the uh, uh, yeah, overtime, yeah, overtime. They're going to be going in, they're going to go left, they're not going to go right unless they want to go to the right wall. That's going to be immediately getting them to 50. Yeah, um, well, let's see what they do here because they do have that checkpoint advantage. So that forcing the checkpoint works out in their favor here. Uh, but now they're looking to try to build on that lead. Two down situation here, make that a three down, and there should be more points on the board. Elemental, running it down, able to uh, ride the waves hey, of this crack. Let's no, go! Let's go! Win that new way through Slick! <laughs> that squid bag <laughs> method always worked out. It, no one knows it, but the squid bag method shows right there. That's proof why it works out if you're all going on in Kabul. That's the that's the still point of why you why you want to do that and maybe get any point to try to cheat at any point as much as possible. Thank you, Elemental, for showing that evidence. And now they have nine points. That's a crazy defense, crazy combo they have. With 61 to nine points left, three down on the side of PV Ice Cream. This might be going to this might be going one to one. Go ahead. Yeah, it very well could. I mean, I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm still hung up on that that squid bag play right there. I mean, yeah, I, I agree. People need to squid bag more as like an actual strategic move, because uh, because that was hot. Like, <laughs> if you want to know what peak gameplay looks like, that is it. And we are now under a minute <laughs> remaining, and Kiwi Ice Cream trying to find a way to get back into this one as they do have a pretty big mountain to climb themselves. Uh, so it, it is going to take quite a bit. To, to get to a near knockout. Yeah, but the near knockout, again, 33 times remaining. We see on the side of... Okay. I thought like Kiwi Rising getting immediately decimated by Mac TP on the Kraken. One still on the bike, clearly a little bit afraid of what to do next on the way for the team. 20 seconds remaining. All they have to do is try to find a way to aggro. Mostly try to go for the right path at this point. Try to go and go, go for the painful way and go for the lead there, but who knows. 10 seconds left. One shot down, Sarge Machine is still alive, Kraken is already killed off, Cool is going to be coming time anytime soon. On the left is what we're looking at. Overtime is now active here. It's three members up for Kiwi Ice Cream. Trying to keep this push alive. Oh. And oh, the Zooka shot raining down from the heavens to shut this one down and send us to another game three. GG's well played Z luck. You changing from carbon to shot has proven so much worth right there. You have successfully began to aggro as you needed to be. But now it's time for the counter pick of Kiwi Ice Cream. Again, Kiwi Ice Cream having the advantage in points and in, in leaderboard actually being in the top 20 if I remember correctly. But for the side overtime, they need to have a little bit of a climb being in a top 32. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, oh, top 32 still in play for these two teams. Uh, but whoever kind of loses out here is probably gonna get shut out for good. Uh, because there's just not a lot of time left after this set. You might be able to get in two more sets. 
Um, but yeah, uh, going to a game three here for both of these teams, definitely not ideal either as, you know, speed is definitely a factor that you need to consider here. Like you want to get these games done fast, but you know, it's, it's not, it's not fully in your control. Um, you know, if you're in a 1-1 one -one tight set, like, okay, we just got to dive into game three and get this dub because that's the most important part here. Would have been nice to get a 2-0, but hey, um, we're in the situation now do whatever it takes to come out with a victory. If you want to know some info about these two teams right now, for the size of Kiva last game, as we as you mentioned before, they are they went three to three. If they win this, they're gonna be beating overtime in points, so they're gonna be up in the top eighteen while for overtime, they're in nineteenth place right now. Four to two. If they do win this they're gonna be in the first page top ten. If they get an extra win off that, they should be able to make the top eight Barely, but still make it up there in a matter of in a matter of like an inch of their teeth. But for right now, again, for the other people who's in the leaderboard right now, we see some notable names actually already in the second page gone because of that. But some questionable, surprising names in the in the top eight right now as well. Uh, they, that's that's the fun of ladder, baby. Like I mean, like la ladder can really create uh, some unpredictable top cuts uh, just due to the nature of how ladder operates um, but it is it's a lot of fun uh, in my opinion so you you create some unique matchups you create you know some unique opportunities for teams that you know maybe haven't made an alpha before but hey now you, you're gonna be in a you know top cut here for uh, laddering um, so a lot uh, a lot of really cool storylines you can develop uh, when you have a unique format such as this where you know there you have a bit of randomization within the uh, within the, the map list uh, and you uh, have all sorts of just random different matchups you know it's it's not necessarily like it, it, they tr you try to get similar matchups to what your record indicates, but you can realistically play anybody across the board. You can you can play the number one team like five times and you know get kind of screwed out of top cut, or you can uh, you know get a lucky schedule and you know work your way through and you know surprise people like, wait, how did this team make top cut? Um, so it's it's definitely a lot of fun to follow as you know game three is now on deck here. Tower control, yeah. Hagglefish market. Um, for, I mean, again, first time seeing this one today. So, uh, you know, going to be interested to see how these these two teams sort of go about this. Keep your eye on top cut as well, because this might be the map in there. But really for us seeing, or for everyone coming into the stream, watching for the ladder format, yes. Tower control, Hagglefish is going to be the first time. The checkpoint is going to be on the far right. And then after that is basically a snowball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, so let's, let's, I mean, I don't know, I'm, I'm really excited uh, to, to see how this one goes. Uh, Tower Control Hagglefish definitely can go one or two directions. You know, it, it can either be super snowball -y, but it also can be very back and forth. Um, so it, you know, it really kind of depends on um, how you play beyond the second checkpoint. Um, so that's when things can start to get really messy, but that's also an opportunity to, you know, really come up clutch defensively. So, you know, no lead is ever truly safe here on Tower Control Hagglefish. Um, so every little play that you make does matter as we are seeing a bit of a comp mix up here from both oh. teams. What? Okay. <laughs> Elemental going to Rapid Blaster uh, deck of it that is. I remember they were playing that before, so it's pretty good to see them change from that back line to the more aggressive kind of play with the nice just got coming to play again. They could be sinking from left and right. Monk is still going to go on the right side with the zap. We see the Cutmore coming back into play from Z Look again. We're going to be seeing some coming from Damp on the side of Kiwi Ice Cream. We see the Hydra. That's a huge change in the pro. Wait, that's double Booyah. What? They really want to keep this tower secure uh, with the double booyah as the Carbon Deco is going to pick up two nice picks there. Uh, Hyde, is, is that the Hydra that's like run, running it down right now? Okay, they're yep. going to go ahead and back it up. All right, so I was, I was going to say that. That was a little bit of, uh, of a little oh. play there and they're going to get shut down by that Azuka. So, uh, 
Uh, it looks like this will be uh, Overtime's opportunity to get control on this tower. And of course, they're going to lose two of their own. So uh, a minute into this game and a grand total of six points have been scored uh, between these two teams. <laughs> uh, neither team is really going to get any control yet. My six was being scored two down on the side of that was actually overtime being two down, so we're going to be seeing the side of Keeper Rising going up in the lead. That was like eight specials going into play. The double viewers actually going to be finally figured out now on the side of Keeper Rising, getting the kill of Z. Look, no carbon sticks on their form. Elemental are being stuck in the corner. They have some chip cameras, so they are marked, but Elemental left in the corner. They need to jump out or they need to decide to wait for specials. But again, second checkpoint now. The snowball is in play. Yeah, and no, it looks like they're going to get off that tower real quick, though. Uh, slowing things down a fair bit, but this is the oh. important section here. Checkpoint 2, checkpoint, uh, checkpoint 3, and wow, a great defensive play there from overtime to send all of the members back to spawn uh, with a beautiful wipeout. So now they're going to be very quick to respond here. Kraken going to come out, just be an ultra aggressor here. Try to get their oh. team into plat, and that's going to be two down on the side of a kiwi ice cream and this should be a free first checkpoint i think uh as all the members of kiwi ice cream trying to quickly get to tower able to slow it down but oh take a look at this oh it seemed like they knew something was up but no did not poke around enough trapper forced to throw the booyah bomb straight down and this they're gonna they're gonna keep doing this Jorian. they're gonna keep just hanging around this show is Monkey's going to be staying, staying on the left, trying to stay, trying to help the whole team, trying to go ahead. Maybe mostly want to go with Z look together as they want to put the tab on the side of Elemental or on the side of Maxi Boot. But Maxi Boot having a third Kraken, having a fourth Kraken coming into play now to help the aggression push. But every time the Kraken push has been played, we saw the tri on the side, keep it getting the doubles and triples every time, shutting them down every single time. But Maxi Boot again on the Kraken, having some time to push up, but no one's on tower once again. Elemental need to be knowing about the objective rather than kills right now. Uh, yeah, it definitely seems like they, they could use a little more support on that front, but hey, I mean, they do get two down here, so it, this could be a chance for them to start uh, getting things moving, start adding more points to the board and closing that lead. Uh, moving along now, Darius almost threw that Booyah Bomb. This is, this is exactly why Kiwi Ice Cream has these two Booyah Bombs. Because they know that this is going to be a big scoring opportunity now for uh, overtime. But they can quickly put it to a stop with a well-timed and well-placed Booyah. And that's exactly what this one's going to do. It stops the push dead in its tracks at 46 points remaining. They cut the lead in half. But it's not going to go any further. And hey, they can just rinse and repeat this as overtime continues to try to chip away. Cut lead didn't happen. At the same time, Maxi Boots Kraken got denied. At the same time, they popped it. But again, getting the two kill off. Well, actually, one and off trade. Now two down on the side. A uh, key ice cream. This is the time for Vatan to push. But again, the tower's going so far behind. Everyone's still they're going on the fight. Try, don't try to go for kills. We need someone on the tower for, uh, for overtime to actually get points secured. But for right now, they're just waiting for the Zapper to do that instead of waiting for Chuck, but still anyone on the side of Kiwi Ice Cream can just hop on. We're just waiting for the Chuck, we're waiting for the double Fierce to go and play the GG Booyah. It's going to be imminent. Yeah, the pro was ready for it. They were, they were waiting for that tower to keep moving, but uh, luckily didn't even have to use it there. Could just throw it back in the mid and try to take up a little bit of space. Uh, as now Monkey, once again, trying to shark, but it's going to get called out pretty quickly here. Kiwi Ice Cream maintains their position in the driver's seat going into the final 10 seconds. As two members of Overtime go down, they're going to try to keep this push moving despite the numbers disadvantage. The Booyahs need to get built up here by Kiwi Ice Cream. I don't know if uh, they have it. Is, is there someone holding it in the back, Ella? It looks like that. it's oh. not going to matter anyways, as Kiwi Ice Cream will survive this game and come out on top two games to one. <laughs> that Kraken, all I can really say is that might have been popped a little bit too early for, uh, for overtime to really guess on it, but for the side of Kiwi Ice Cream, they just predicted well. GG's go next, as everyone would say, with only 30 minutes left of the bracket, or but the latter. Kiwi Ice Cream going to be let, ending off his 20th place right now for, for overtime. Knock them down from the second page, going down to 24th place. Again, to get into the top 10, 
the top 8 even. You need to have 7 games right now, but at the same time as 2, you have to have more than 6 wins, as we see Ooh. on the board. Yeah, uh, definitely going to be an, an interesting photo finish here uh, on the leaderboard uh, for, for these teams. But, uh, you know, time, time will tell um, for sure. So, Jorian, I believe that is going to do it for us, too, though. Um, so the last bit of ladder will be brought home by a different set of commentators. So uh, go, let's go ahead and uh, wrap this one up. Uh, where can you? Yeah. Uh, who can the people of our beautiful chat find you? Well, you can find me, Jermaine 51 on Twitter, Jermaine 2, Jermaine 2 on Twitch, uh, and also streaming Screen Junction later tonight, which is going to be mostly happening right after this, uh, like an hour after uh, Lado Inc. But what about you, DRF? Yeah, you can go ahead and find me on Twitter at DRF underscore Splatoon and on Twitch at Triton DRF. But per usual, you can go ahead and find me over at the CCA running all things Collegiate Splatoon. Yeah, but as we actually going to be doing the BI back to have a soft contest, why not we have a little bit of a look at leaderboards as we going to be calling it off of us? For sure. So, um, it is. <laughs> well, uh, taking taking a quick look there. Um, yeah, uh, Crescent Crescent Knight Alliance Moon continue to ride the top here. Matter of opinion, losing their first set, Miss Q as well. Um, and Monsoon uh, hanging in there, Royal Succulents, Velvet Sky, and um, I'm gonna not try to pronounce that one, but. <laughs> Found his team. <laughs> yep, there we go. Uh, rounded out that top eight, uh, but it's still anybody's game. Pufferfish, we saw earlier on stream, just hanging in there, uh, trying to sneak back into that top eight, but uh, it should be an exciting end to this one, folks. Stick with us, you won't wanna miss it.
Welcome back to our Ladder Inc. one-off edition, hopefully. My name is Cronenbeer, and I am joined by my friend and co-commentator, Glitch Cactus here. How are we doing today, Glitch? Uh, I'm doing a fantastic, and uh, I'm going to say this just because it is not your fault. It's been forever since we last spoke. Please yeah. call me Cactus, don't call yeah, me Yeah, I, so I literally, <laughs> in my mind, I don't know, I was like, it says Cactus, the glitch first, you're, you're, like, you're I knew it was Cactus. All right, guys, you, you're not the first, you're not the last. <laughs> we're starting off great. Actually, I am the last, but we're starting off great here on the mic, but um, we apologize for the, it seemed like it took a little while here. We are trying to get the password correct to join Sendu, but 5555 was not it, so. Um, Oh, we, we did get the right password this time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, please suggest, chat, please. <laughs> please suggest some passwords, because... Um, we'll try again. Sendu really wanted us to join his lobby, that's for sure. I think we had three notifications for that while we were waiting. But real talk here, our match... Uh, we didn't even invite the, talk about the teams at all, Cactus, here. We're like, nah. Would you like to introduce our teams? Absolutely. So coming in right off the left, we have Eternal Oblivion uh, being made up of Marky 4K, Maj Majora, Ga Ganyu, Ganyu. Uh, I'm going to assume the X is for an A, uh, Dami, and we have Zuno. And coming in from Calamity Forge Neo, uh, a team that has regularly been coming in through these uh, lowings, but now the first ever ladder rank. Uh, we're looking at uh sub avici uh, sub two enemy uh i'm having a noticeable lag on my end at 13 balls and game over yeah all right here we go remember splatstones always starts our ladder here and we're on museum and all i see is special charge up from avici over there um you got you love to see it 
Absolutely, as right off the bat, we are going to see Eternal Oblivion take full control of the zone first as Calamity Forge and Neo. He looks to build up some specials and get a beautiful double pick on the sidelines. Now, using this opportunity to push in with the specials, here come the rest of the players of Calamity Forge and Neo. Looking for a full wipeout if they can get it with the last one on the side, barely getting a pick off on the side. And the zone's going to flip over for Calamity Forge and Neo as they count down these points to get a quick lead flip over. Nice pick. There's two and three uh, throughout the th th two members there. <laughs> and three down, giving it that zone right back. No penalty really here, so looking. I like the push up here, and they should be getting some good points here, Cactus. Absolutely, as the the counter ticks down, we are going to see Cooler and Zuka, as long with Missile, just all of the specials being popped out from Calamity Forge to try to regain not just their plot, but hopefully a little bit of zone, scaring away the remaining players. They're going to try to get a cap here as they chase down these remaining players. Sub to enemy, getting a beautiful wiper pick on the side as they are cooled up. That's two players down on the side of Eternal Oblivion, as now they have to try to wait for the remaining players to come back, build up some specials, and as the penalty counts down, Calamity Forge is going to want to try to continue this lead they have uh, space-wise and hopefully lead that into a point lead as well. Yeah, something I'd like to see from Calamity Forge Neo here is just moving up to their plat here and giving a lot of pressure. Ink Zoo comes, comes out, gets destroyed there, I think, with the trade. Game over with this snipe from the Trizuka. That's going to be some really good value, but it's looking here like it might be a turnover. Yes, indeed, turnover to Eternal Oblivion. We have a very just back and forth game on our hands. Both these teams seem to be pretty equivalent when it comes to the skill level matched against them. And as you would expect, this late into the ladder. Uh, now we see a J uh, B a Papa Nazuka hopefully trying to get a pick, but it's going to be unsuccessful. And the zone is going to look to flip over right back before Eternal Oblivion can get that lead swap, which is something that we are seeing first now when it comes to these zones going back and forth. Oh man, JB overwhelmed there and. I think they might get something. Wow, Avicii gets a nice pick. I think gets two there. Can they get this? No, nice backup here. This is going to be a battle here, but pencil or not, a lot of range here. But he ends up indeed uh, getting that zone. But unfortunately going down, Kenyu has a nice Trizuka there, but doesn't realize JB is here to save the day. Back and forth game here, Cactus. Really to go anybody's way. Absolutely, and you know, with that uh, Zap player originally going down, sub to enemy, getting this two, looking insane. for a third, is unsuccessful. This is now going to be regular points counting down for Calamity Forge Neo as we're getting down to the 30s. There's Avicii on the flag, getting one down, that's two down on the side of both teams now. Thankfully, they were able to get that cooler off just in the nick of time for sub to enemy on the wiper to get a great amount of a paint output to hold the zone over while the rest of their teammates come through. Looking at the overhead here, we see the pure just devastation we have of Calamity Forge Neo taking this zone and as the knock goes for a flick on the side it is caught off by sub to Emmy on the wiper and that's going to be game number one going to Calamity Forge Neo wow I, I don't think we talked about this much Cactus but sub to Emmy was putting in a lot of a lot of effort there a lot of great picks like a lot of uh I, I forget the word here Cactus but important picks where they were dying in places where they could come back with a team, but when they were getting picks there, they were very much impact picks. That's what it is. Uh, very impactful with the picks there and really helped overall have that team get the W there, but it is not over. We have a best of three um, in this, so a counter pick will come in from Eternal Oblivion, I believe, soon, and um, we will get that counter pick very soon here, but. Um, Still, Eternal Oblivion, I believe, in the top 30 cactus, 4-4 four and four at the moment, while Calamity Forge Neo has a little bit better of a record here. They are looking to get into the top 8 here. I believe it is very much possible for Calamity Forge Neo to get top 8 if they win here. If they lose, well, they are definitely out here. Absolutely. Taking a look on our side at the current standings for these teams, Calamity Forge Neo sits at a comfortable oh, wow. and very close ninth 
ranking for this uh ladder lowing as eternal oblivion is sitting at 28th so like you mentioned calamity forge neo is aiming to take this and take it strong a 2-0 would be massive for them and depending on how the rest of the remaining matches if any besides this streamed one are finishing up it could lead for them to place a solid placement in this first ever and hopefully like you mentioned last and only ladder lowing <laughs> yeah we will not know but at the end of the day placement is everything here so um if they can get a 2-0 here that would be great for them because again they are ninth right now the eighth place team out of this ladder bracket will have to face an almighty first place team so which they can defeat because we only have eight teams here and the the uh skills should be around the same level in this top eight but still um Crescent Knight at first has not lost a match yet. Absolutely, and followed behind them, Alliance Moon, both teams sitting strong at the first mm -hmm. and second seeding, and probably going to try to keep it that way, as any teams that further their scores would have to hope for a very strong win uh, to try to knock them down, but like you mentioned, they're sitting really solidified, and uh, we are finding out what our next map mode is going to be. We're going over to Clam Blitz on Inkplot Art Academy, a very classic map mode combination, and one that has called for some insane overtime pushes and overtime clutches, and some very dominant plays, if played correctly, in great lockout positions. Yeah, and I, I love me some Clam Blitz Ink, but maybe a little biased, because I do play the Ink Brush, but still, I will say, Clam Blitz Ink Blot is, is actually one of those maps which I, even without playing Brush, really, really like. So, I am excited to see these teams here. Clam B Forge Neo, looking for a 2-0 here, but Turn Oblivion, just trying to get something out of this here, so... Oh, I love sub to me already. You love to see it. I will try not to be biased here, guys, but hey, they played Brush. You know, and I gotta give props over to JB pulling out the Vanilla Blaster, but so is, uh, I believe, Dami on the other oh, wow, side. Yeah with uh, um, Eternal Oblivion. I mean, Vanilla Blaster is such a smart play. I mean, just a dominant play so far, though, in general, being made by sub to enemy, going in on the brush, trying to scare away that pencil, although they are cooler it up. So far, a very dominant beginning and opening for Calamity Forge Neo. Hey, yeah, I was gonna say, just in general, it was a very bloody first uh, first few minutes, or first, first few seconds, I should say there, as I think three went down for each team, or it was like five down at a time. Speaking of bloody, there are already three down in total, two on the side of, I believe, Calamity, or I should say, uh, Eternal Oblivion there, so... At this moment, they're just really trying to get clams here, because not really, I mean, on the side of... Calamity Neo there. They do have enough, but, but now they have none! And it's three down! There you go! That's good for Eternal Oblivion. You know, absolutely. I mean, Zuno here on the Stamper, which is another weapon we haven't seen pulled out just yet by either of these teams. Just doing some work, getting that extra bit of range use here, and making that power climb as they're cooled up. Things are looking a little dangerous for Calamity Fortune, but as we saw for the first minute and a half of this game, it is very back and forth. Both these teams putting a lot of pressure on each other. It's just right now, Eternal Oblivion doing a excellent job at holding strong in mid. And as I say it, the commentator's curse comes falling down on me. <laughs> Three players down go for Eternal Oblivion as they try to come back from mid, uh, from spawn to mid and Calamity Forge pushing to get that mid control. Yeah, we. It's, it's really a stalemate here for both of these teams. They get a pick, but they, they, they seem to just be trading and being very neutral here. So. I think the first person to get something here, which it might be, JB here gets one, and get, that's three, we should be seeing hopefully a score here, and that should be a delayed wipe score incoming potentially here. Nice play by Vici and the crew, but unfortunately, I don't know if we're going to get anything out of it. Great defense here. As oh, I, uh, also the the I also offense, incredible job putting that in, and game over, getting a nice double pick to support that. Clamps piling in just a little bit more at a time. Here comes Avicii, though, with maybe three more to continue this push. They're going to have to back up, though, as the remaining players of their team fall down, and Avicii forced to fall back to their plot, especially with Cooler, popping it in time for their players to come back and get it and get ready for what might be Eternal Oblivion's next push. Yeah, I mean, they did get something in there, and for this type of game, that might be very good for them, because if, if you think about it, we've been very neutral for a good two minutes and a half, and if anything, one ball could be it all, but 
in the end, usually speaking, that 77 is not a good standing. So we would like to see another push here from Calamity Forge Neo. But one down each side, very neutral here as two now for Eternal Oblivion down. You know, Calamity Forge Neo is doing an excellent job at not being too hasty, right? They're doing a great job looking out for these picks, doing callouts to try to mix up these players. Here comes the zip by Sub2 Enemy, who's been really the star player these past two games, getting one with the zip. Excellent pick. Avicii goes down, though, to the Stamper, and they're going to get piled up on. There goes down a Turnable Oblivion. It's going to be just the Pencil. Sub to Enemy is throwing the clam up to have a little bit more space, get the rem remaining players in as they can. Sub to Enemy making a great play, though, backing up if they have to. The bubble, though, by JB. This team coordination is just unstoppable. There goes another score by Calamity Forge Neo. Yeah, I really like it here, but I, I feel like we could have gotten the ball in a little faster here and had a little faster to score. But Eternal Oblivion shutting them down pretty quick. 59, while in this type of game with one minute remaining, is going to be a hard bet. It is certainly doable, uh, and it could have been way worse. Absolutely. As we enter the last minute of the game, it's really going to come down to Calamity Forge Neo trying to hold strong. But as two players go down, potentially three, as the Samper are here, four Eternal Oblivion is looking to push in. Who has been popped on both sides? This is going to be a dangerous situation here for Calamity Forge Neo, unless they can get the picks, and they will. It is a 1v2. It is a wipeout on Calamity Forge Neo. And now Eternal Oblivion with oh, the no. jumps coming in are potentially going to take the lead with the clams trying to be found. But there are none, and they're getting wiped down on the field. I thought they, they had two jumps there. I thought they were going to grab the pity, which they definitely could have gotten the lead there from. But uh, nonetheless, Surprising me there. 71 though, uh, it's it's still possible. They do have that pity left. It, I mean, if they did screw up on the throw or something with that pity jumping in, it could have been trouble. But nonetheless, we've got five seconds here. We're going to go into 20 seconds of overtime, but we might not have any overtime here as the bubble is out for Oblivion. Uh, I should say Calamity. And uh, yep, yeah, that is in for the game. That is a 2 0 for Calamity Forge Neo here to finish wow. out the ladder. An incredible set played by Calamity Forge Neo. That last game, the coordination and understanding to not get yourself into a stagger. They did an excellent job at being patient even when things were looking grim. And a couple times we saw on the overhead, if you looked at the above panels of the players that were going up and down, when two players were down on Calamity Forge Neo, it seems one player was able to clutch it out and get another two picks on Eternal Oblivion. So every time you thought Eternal Oblivion had an opportunity to push forward with some kind of advantage it was not there it was not had mm -hmm. calamity forge neo pulling out all the stops to secure this 2-0 victory as one of the last rounds in the ladder hoping it's enough to make the top eight ranking and i'm here to say i don't know how quickly we could pull up our ladder but um as of now and i think because we ended a little late here it might be confirmed. It does not seem like it was enough as the win has gone through 7-2 for Calamity Forge Neo in terms of win-loss, but they still stick at ninth place there. So, unfortunate. I, I could be wrong here, but it seems to be um, that Calamity Forge Neo will unfortunately not make it there. But um, that was definitely a good match there, so... Hey, if I'm Clammy Forge Neo, I am very happy with our results. Absolutely. I mean, if if the rankings do not adjust from here on out, if there are any more matches that could potentially be happening, uh, they definitely played their strongest and played very well, um, as it is thrown up, obviously, on screen for uh, the viewers to see. The final placements mm -hmm. looks like we are going to be seeing a top eight of Crescent Knight, Alliance Moon, Matter of Opinion, Misk, Royal Succulent, Velvet Sky, Monsoon, and I can't pronounce that. I'm sorry. How do you pronounce that? <laughs> I'm going to have to get Alice for that one, one of our TOs for Dapples, <laughs> because I'm going to be real honest with you. Uh, they have taught me some words for stream in German. And uh, yeah, that is so, that is a Alice moment. But um, nonetheless, they get eighth place and i'm not butchering that so 
I'm not going to the shop, you know? I'm not gonna shop that up. I right? will say though, they I'm have a keep beautiful hold. profile picture. I love the profile picture they have. Let me see, let me see. It looks delicious. Ooh. Hold on, I, maybe I can be I'm a terrible... It. Maybe I could just try to Google Translate. Maybe. <laughs> if it lets me copy-paste. We're gonna try <laughs> our hardest. We're gonna try, okay. Listen, I, gotta, I wanna try, I wanna try. <laughs> I wanna try. Alright. Well, I want to say the first word is triple fritter. Oh, is it? Oh, man, I'm going to get... I believe we're being told it is something you can uh, buy in the game. So I'm going to get roasted on Twitter.com. So Same. I'm, I'm used you to know, getting roasted on Twitter. We're going to be like, stormy, you thought so. that was German? Oh, my God. Get him out of here. Triple fried gamba waffles. Don't look at me like a Google Translate. That's what I was told. But probably, probably isn't, isn't that like shrimp? I mean, that's what the profile picture is, though. So. You yeah, know, I've shrimp. already yeah, it's shrimp. So it's shrimp waffles. <laughs> I've already mistaken one thing, Cactus. I'm not mistaking another thing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, I'll take the L this time around. I don't mind. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely taking the L there, but congratulations. You're in. <laughs> that's all I can say. You're in. But, um, so now what's going to happen, or uh, I believe we're, I don't have a better word for this, but we're calibrating the bracket. That's, calibrating I don't think is the right word, guys. But, um, or seeding, maybe seeding. Seeding, thank you, I appreciate <laughs> it. Cactus is coming in <laughs> clutch here, guys. Calibrating, <laughs> I'm good. According to my calculations, this might be our topic. <laughs> oh, man, yeah. So, yeah. but... Um, I should say, we, we have, while we're seeding the bracket, technically seeding the bracket, we also had, uh, one last match off stream right now, so, uh, might be a few minutes there, but for now, we will have, unless something magical happens, you know, I don't think we're in Disney, but, um, I could be wrong here, Cactus, but Crescent Knights and Alliance Moon basically both sit in the number one slot, they're both 5-0, and 100% win streak, they're going to be very interesting to play against for other opponents there. Well, as we have matter of opinion, I got to look at this profile as well. Is that a cow? It's a cow with a cowboy hat. I love it. Um, they have an 89% win rate with one L. They took the L um, once, but that's okay. Um, they got third for that. Uh, then I think you've said misc m-i-s-q Very nice. Very cool. Very amazing So amazing in fact that they are also nine or eight and one I should say uh, Like matter of opinion. These names are very very cool. I'm not gonna lie cactus Absolutely, um, I mean these teams have some incredible names as we mentioned looking down the rest of the list of course I mean velvet sky with a beautiful sky background. I love monsoons with the the uh, <laughs> the, chump, the chump profile. That's picture. for sure It's beautiful. I'm a fan um, I can you know, say I mean, these teams do it so these teams obviously 100% doing so well and deserving of this top eight placement that they received um, yeah. You know and again top eight for now and then leads into the ladder uh it's a uh, top eight ladder or top eight bracket from the ladder itself uh and reminder um no losers bracket obviously for those who may be not fully aware on how this works once we go into mm -hmm. top eight it is single elam you go straight in whatever placement you get is what you get you do not get upset um unless you want to complain on twitter then have your have at it feel free uh, but <laughs> keep that on help desk. I, our TOs do a lot. Thank you, TOs. Thank them. God bless the TOs. Thank you, TOs. Thank you they for your so service. Much. You know how hard it was probably for these TOs to to figure out ladder lowing. Thank you, TOs. Yeah, because they probably were like, we don't really want to do a ladder. And I would be like, I agree. But hey, ladder had to be done. At least it's not turf four. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you know, but, we'll, uh, we'll, take, we'll take no terror we'll for <laughs> through this low end. I think, that, I think that would have been a bigger complaint than the ladder form. <laughs> That's so true, but but I must say, yeah, these teams, going back to names and stuff, I'm just thinking of uh, 
as you heard, DRF was on the mic just a little bit ago, and he's the head of the college league that they have. And, well, our team basically thought of a name within, like, 30 seconds, and, and it's not really good. I'm not going to lie. If you're watching team, you can't you can't deny it's a bad name. The Red Embers with a Z at the end. Who thought of that? I mean, hey, if you want to hear bad names, name. I'll, ne I'll never forget oh. when uh, I played in the... Uh... One of the last Splatoon 2, like, uh oh, qualifier thingies. Yeah. We had, um, it was me and like three others who were all looking to sell or find a team, and we couldn't. So we all made a team like 30 minutes before uh, sign ups ended, and we were go. like, Silent Scorpions. Scorpions are, are always quiet, they don't really make a sound. And we were like, there you go. So team names could be bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, if any of them are watching, yeah. Them, <laughs> but we're, we're we're using this all season, you know, not just for mm. one game. You know that is different. That is very different. Mm, yeah, I'm, it is. But uh, we could be more creative there, guys. I'm I'm just gonna say. <laughs> I don't know. Don't at me on Twitter. Thank hey, you. Hey, you know you know what will be funny though if if you what? end up winning the entire thing, you, you get you get to wear that name with pride. Uh. <laughs> it's gonna be a rough, a rough semifinals and finals if we get there. We have to play against the like two best teams who are stacked. You're just better, easy. Um, yeah, sure. I mean, hey, <laughs> I'm not. We did win our first. Uh, what's it called? We did win our first playoff match, so that was cool. Ah, there you go. See, see. Yeah, I have a, I have a guy on our team. Great guy, huge guy, obviously. He, he had some stuff, uh, I won't say, but he's like, yeah, I won't be here this whole week. And I was like, oh, no, that's that's a big oh, no, Cactus, because that is three days where everybody, average college student usually is free at some point. Right. Yeah. And then so, like, I had to call up our opponent and be like, yo, can we do it today? And like, they hadn't even seated it yet. <laughs> hadn't even seated the playoffs. <laughs> Oh, I'm getting off topic, guys. Um, it's okay. I mean, I think we, we, we get a, we're get we allowed to have a little bit of off-topic banter uh, <laughs> while we wait for the last match of the ladder to finish up and for all yeah. placements to be solidified uh, below the top eight. Um, speaking I mean, of off-topic things, I mean, today, later tonight, my team are we're playing our first playoff Looty match, so that's going to be oh, exciting. Right. What division? What division are we? Uh, or, sorry, uh, uh, right, it's uh, division. Uh, Division four. Division four. Thank you. You're Who's it against? Uh, it's uh my team persistence versus uh. Hold on, I'm bad at that. I don't. I, don't uh, I, I just I just have uh. I don't know. Stor I usually let Stormy do with this, not me. <laughs> I was gonna be real honest with you, Cactus. I, I thought you were gonna be like it's it's against like my old team, you know. Um, actually, if we Wait, win this, if we win this, my old Boy. team Aquatic Vanguard, if they also win theirs. We will go head to head in the playoffs. Funny enough, I, I must give another shout out to Aquatic Vanguard again because uh, they helped us prep for our CCA opponents and we uh, we crushed. So, God bless the people at Aquatic Vanguard. They are great people, huge people. But guess what, guys? Guess what? I'm not giving you time to answer. We are finished with our ladder portion of Ladder Inc. And our top eight will be starting real soon. Everybody has finished in the ladder. Hear that, chat? We're going to top eight. And we will have a match for you all very shortly. Once again, to confirm those eight names like we did before, if you're just tuning in, we have Crescent Knight, Alliance Moon, Matter of Opinion, Misk, or is it Miske? Oil Succulents, Monsoon, uh... Triple Fritter, Shrimp Waffles, Velvet Sky, as your top eight. I must ask, because maybe my memory is terrible, was Royal in the top eight last I checked? Or yeah, they are or uh, fifth. Moved. They are fifth. That, so we're looking at as our top oh. eight uh, is loaded up, ready to go. And it's showing on screen um, the teams we have. That we're gonna be watching is I'm being corrected in chat. Thank you, those correcting me in chat. It is Miss Q and Royal oh, it makes Silence. so much more sense. We are getting 
absolutely berated on Twitter and I love that. Uh, 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 we like screwed up two to publicly three apologize for yeah. mis mispronouncing names. Of, listen, I did say we did say before we pronounce these names that we might pronounce them wrong. We did give the we warning. Did say this. We, well, we did. Listen, I love the uniqueness of the names, but so we're not we're not always told how they're pronounced. So apologies. Uh, I. Uh, <sighs> Anyway, sorry. I'm, I'm thinking, thinking of some bad stuff. With anyway, uh, on our map pool right now, it is the, the big difference here, Cactus. Uh, that I'm going to explain now for the rest of our top eight. For our top eight, our quarterfinals here, right? I mean, I got it right. We have set maps. So quarterfinals, semifinals have set maps. Once we get back to our grand finals, which we will see real soon, so. Stay here. Uh, it'll be in a, like an hour or so, but um, that's when the counter picks come back. So we've been counter picking this whole time and ladder, but now for our top eight and our top four semifinals and quarterfinals, we will be having set maps. With that being said, Clamblitz Crab Lake Capital is our first map here today. Absolutely, Clamblitz Crab Leg Capital. Uh, a very interesting map mode combination, one that's been played around here and there. A lot of teams already figuring out that sometimes the best best answer could be very well crack and cheese. I've seen it time and time again um, from multiple different levels, so we could be seeing that from either of these teams. Now, this is probably going to be one of the closest sets that mm -hmm. we are going to see currently um, as we move forward in the lat and the uh, in our the, top eight situation. <laughs> in our top eight uh, in our bracket. Sorry, I forgot the word bracket. Uh, as both these teams are right next to each other in the seating, uh, with Miss Q mm -hmm. being seed four and Royal Succulents being five. Both of these teams are going to be giving it their all in hopes to take get, hopes to take in a best of three to move on. Indeed here. Now looking at our bracket, there was only one change. Technically, Velvet Sky unfortunately lost their match, so they dropped to eighth and will have to face a brutal battle with Crescent Knight in the first. We'll update you after this match has ended, but we're going to be focusing on Miss Q versus Royal Succulents. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Or else, okay, cool. Um, oh, did we did we get it wrong? Uh, on our side, we are seeing Rainmaker Crab Leg, and we're hoping that is... There we go. What a save by... I gotta get a shout out for Kid Link for switching that. We almost went to a Rainmaker match that we didn't want to play. <laughs> almost the instant... Uh, aha, whoopsie. Wrong map notice going through. Thankfully, these teams are... Um, communicating very well with each other as well. We're keeping an eye, not just focusing too hard on the game just yet, especially since we are still loading in. Um, both these teams are readying up as soon as they can, figuring things out for their sides. Mm -hmm. um, once yeah. again, Clamblitz on Crab like Capital. Looking to be very interesting, and uh, a very interesting game to start off with as well. Clam Blitz being the first one you're set with, you gotta have that great team coordination. Pushes here, although that, that could be very quick when you're going towards the enemy base ramp. Uh, you're looking to have that clam economy, and if you do not have it, you are going to look for uh, an unfortunately bad time is what you're looking at. Uh, so once you wanna, you wanna have, <laughs> you sure. wanna have those clam economies, or else you're gonna be pushing into the spawn with no clams, and you're gonna be frantically trying to find them. But without further ado. Here we go, the start of round one in our top eight. Ew, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that Dynamo. is, uh... Oh, I'm in love with this already. Oh. Such a rare pick coming straight out. We're looking at a, from Mario Succulents, looking at that Dynamo pick with Splash, Ballpoint, and Slosher. And on the side of Miss Q, we're looking at T-Tech, uh, Splattershot, Pencil, and 52 Gal. Very mobile. Yeah, I always joke there about the, the shooter meta here, but it is indeed pencil and shooters are great right now. But nonetheless, I, I also saw that on the side of Royal Succulents, we don't have any uh, Trizookas. No, no Zookas to be found, but some very important specials nonetheless um, that are there indeed. But also, like you said, that Dynamo Roller, there's a splash. And then, oh, you can't go wrong with the ball point. 
absolutely not. Especially with the special of Jet. This Dynamo trying to see if they can get any top damage picks, which would be unsuccessful. Fights going down on the bottom. Trades going left and right. It's going to be Royal Succulent that has a complete wipeout down on their side. It's going to be a miscue going in and trying to trade some plans and to get the barrier broken with the power claim that they will. Clamps pouring in down to 68 as the, mem the members of Royal Succulents move forward to push them out and try to hold some pressure so they don't get any more clams in. Indeed. We are seeing that the basket does close, but look at this. I'm really liking what Miss Q is doing here. They're really taking that mid and not letting it go. Yes, they did let that basket close, but uh, they were doing a good job, unfortunately. Who else is doing a well, good job? It's the Royal Cyclones getting that mid back. Look at that. How much uh, green now on the map that was not there 15 seconds ago. Specials though coming now against Royal Succulents. Miss Q doing a great job getting down one pick. Here goes the Dynamo on Royal Succulents, dropping that cooler down for their players. Although going two down, remaining two players forced to back out if they can. The Slosher down in mid trying to get a pick is going to go off as a trade with one. No clams ready at, at the moment for Miss Q. So their push is not going to be a sustain just yet, but they're going to try to hold on to mid, hold for some space. If they're able to, as Cooler does come out, getting that ball point down is a huge play. Dynamo's out of ink. It's going to be a couple of trades off going down in mid as both teams are trying to hold as much as they can. Yeah, nice play by the Dynamo there. Jenny getting a huge kill. Look at that. Look at the mechanical skills there. Very nice to get back up there. But what is not nice is that here comes the Trizuka getting their splash player, which is very unfortunate there. But much else. And give a big stalemate as oh. Gets the kill on Kid Link there. Very nice in the slasher. And that is both of their aggressive players there. As Dynamo and Ballpoint are having to kind of stick their ground. Um, as more purple, pink, sorry, pink ink uh, is on the ground. Yeah, you can only stall for so long before things are starting to look a little dangerous here for Royal Succulents. They've done a great job on the defensive side, but they've been unable to really secure an offensive side. Here comes a Miss Q going in, sneakily scoring one power clan, trying to follow with another. It's going to get shut down immediately. Here goes one of the players of Royal Succulents chasing, going forward more, trying to find a pick with some burst bombs, scare the players away. No picks are going to be had any longer. It's going to be Royal Succulents trying to push back in mid once more. This defensive lineup needs to start turning into an offensive one because we're reaching the last minute and a half of the game. And Miss Q is the only team that has been able to score, and they've scored twice. Indeed, and I'm going to, you know, as we go on, I kind of see a problem here. There's that on the side of Royal Succulents, they are lacking a lot of paint where this triple shooter comp is really, and pencil, pencil is a pretty good shooter. Uh, painter the, itself, but we're not seeing a lot of paint output uh, available on the side of Royal, Royal Succulent, so that is giving them a lot of problems to where they have to get some picks. That is just really not happening, but here we go. Tri strikes out, looking for something to happen. Splash down, that is one of your aggressors, down for the count, and ball points, having to get something in. And both of them are now down. The players are just going down left and right on the side of Royal Succulent. It's going to be Miss Q again with a very dominant pickoff here in mid. Sonny looking for a triple, gets a pick and a half there, which is a great move now, holding mid very strong. Things are getting dangerous. Last 30 seconds, and I want to mention, like you were saying before about these comps, it seems that Royal Succulent's comp is just very slow pace. It can't match the speed that Miss Q has, and it might be the downfall. However, though, if they can All push right. off with this wipeout close to it, this might be the opportunity for Royal Succulent to try and score. They just need two balls here, which is is very easy if they can get a push out, but uh, Crab's gotta get something done. Uh, unfortunately, in this meta, that's not possible, my friend. Um, one goes down, the Dynamo does go down. Once, if they're a uh, Splasher, I should say, or, or uh, Slasher does go down, as it might be, lights out, and that is three, unfortunately, down for the count, Dynamo's back, has the ball, keeping it alive, but, um, I'm not gonna be, I'm gonna be honest with you, it's kind of hard for anybody to, you know, get a kill when, like, three or four of them are shooting at you. Absolutely, very unfortunate there, the, the last few seconds that they tried to have, for a push which is unsuccessful uh, i love the opportunity that we saw they were trying to make mm -hmm. for themselves though they had the specials ready online they were having a great lineup there to try and challenge 
uh, any defense that could be had on the side of Miss Q, but it was not enough. Miss Q had an excellent lineup of defense, a wall of defense, if you will, uh, put up to stop any push that Royal Succulents could try to have. So that's going to be game number one and game point for Miss Q. One more win, and they will be moving on in the bracket, sending Royal Succulents home with a top eight finish. Top eight finish. Absolutely. Yeah. Regardless, great placement. Top eight. Yeah, regardless of what you're doing, I believe we had 60 teams come in here. So uh, eighth out of 60 still, you could you could put that on your resume there. But nonetheless, what I would like to see out of Royal Cyclones is honestly a little bit more paint, which it, depending on, I know myself, I'm also pretty much a one trick, but it, if, you know, say the Dynamo, I feel like they just need to stick to one back line per se, uh, Cactus. So... If they can trade out, just say maybe maybe the Dynamo Roller or maybe the Ballpoint, wh whichever, for some paint. Say a, uh, a V-Shot, something, just something to give them paint. Whatever it is. Or a Roller even. Maybe get the Dynamo Roller out to maybe just a regular spot Roller. All I'm looking at is I think they need more paint. And um, so they can be a little less aggressive, per se. Absolutely. They need something that's a lot more removable because that's the one mm -hmm. challenge that we saw with Miss Q, right? Is they, the movability, the option to just push their lineup wherever they needed to go. They had that advantage against Royal Succulent. So maybe Clam Blitz wasn't the move. Although looking at our next map mode combination, we do have Splat Zones on the Museum Dalfoncino. So Splat Zones. Very doable here for that comp they yeah. had. Dynamo puts a lot of pain out. Ballpoint has the range. It just has to come down to special coordination if you want to try to hold that zone together. Now, they're going to have to try to play and hold for that first early aggression and uh, forward hold, or else they're going to be looking at a very unfortunate defensive side. And as we saw from that last game, their defense, although doable, it was very hard for them to break out of even their spawn uh, when it came to pushing back to mid. Yeah, and, and I think, like I've been talking, I've been saying the P word, they, they need paint. I think if they had a little bit more paint, they could easily get out of that base more. Because look, what we're looking at Miss Q is they're just paint. Oh my goodness, that is that is what we're talking about. There's more paint. And uh, that edit, while it is still technically speaking kind of doubled backline there, that, that edit gives you so much more paint. And it's a better cooler weapon in general compared to outputs. Uh, in, in it as well, but already going down is Kid Link over there, and um, I almost called him Kid Volroy. We would have been demonetized there, but uh, nonetheless, Sunny getting that uh, anyway. cooler out. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm getting, getting that cooler extra. down. Uh, I love the pick of the heavy edit, right? You get that extra range, you get that extra space, the extra paint, and it's great. However, though, look Ooh. how dominant Miss Q is playing. 60 points left on the board for them, already on the plat of Royal Succulent, pretty much putting that at a near-death uh, defensive lineup right now. Three specials online, they're going to have to start using them soon, because with only 30 ticks left and now one player on each side, they're going to have to look to get some picks here and try to go back in for the zone. But there's a player getting Ooh. two down on the side of Miss Q. We have only 25 points remaining. The zone is stalled out just for a little bit longer, and it's going to have to be Royal Cyclone trying to fight for it back to hold it, to flip that zone. Yeah, I'm going to be real honest. I think they were waiting for Royal's uh, tactical cooler here, but they died with 87 out of 100 there. And it is looking like two down. Lamp's got to get something done here as the drop comes. That is not looking good. Nine seconds remaining. And wow, the ink is no more. It is looking like a GG's. Wow. A very dominant second game done there by Miss Q securing the next move up in the bracket. I mean, you know, I love the idea that Royal Succulents had at bringing out that double range they would have, but double back line, or sorry, double midline with the ball point and the heavy edit is quite scary and especially if it's not as a, much of a movable uh inflexible comp i mean you're pretty much forcing two players to find their own standing points which are going to be played very similarly and almost next to each other leaving it down to two front lines where you're looking at the side of miss q triple front line triple shooter add a pencil to it i, mm -hmm. I mean that has quite incredible range for the pencil yeah, it, it, it's you're in for some trouble. You are in for a scary time, and it just goes to show how deadly that comp was. Miss Q, 
dominantly taking that set. Yeah, these days with Trizuka being very reliable and stuff like that, and Shooter kind of being the thing again, per se, uh, yeah, Pencil has been a dominant force, including in our comps here, and my team, my uh, college team here, we have used Pencil a lot because its output's really good, and it, while not as fast as an end zap, it still gets you tack really fast, and you have range so you can play other very uh, viable weapons in the pool right now, and it, it just paints, that comp just helps you paint so much, which unfortunately for a double backline and Royal Succulents comp in general, it was just, it was pretty overpowering for it. Absolutely, and we'll have to see if Miss Q's comp will continue to do them justice as I'm going to give you guys in chat an update on the bracket. We are looking update. at a huge upset huge. from round one. Velvet Sky from the eighth seed taking down Crescent Knight that was placed at seed number one. A huge win for them and very dominantly as well. Again, 2-0. and oh. So both these teams are bringing their A game and they're going to bring it all as they move on to round two, hoping to qualify for finals. Looking down at the lower half of the bracket, we do see Alliance Moon taking a very dominant tool as well from a Triple Fritter. And as lastly, we do have one more match going to finish up. It is Matter of Opinion versus Monsoon, with Matter of Opinion currently up 1-0. If they take this, we will have a complete 2-0 of round one. Or will Monsoon be able to put a halt to this 2-0 sweeps for round one of the bracket and tie things up? That is interesting. I'm not a player, so obviously I don't know. The chat doesn't know, but... The players of Matter of Opinion and Monsoon do know. So, nonetheless, I must say that first round here, it's one and done. What does that mean? That means if you win, you go on. If you lose, you're out of the tournament. But in this next round, which we'll get to very shortly here, round two, our semifinals, if you do unfortunately lose, you have a chance for the third place bracket there. So, um, even though... You did take the L and you won't have a chance for the Grand Finals. You do have a chance to get on the podium, which I'd love to be on the podium, Cactus. I don't know about you. Oh, absolutely. Being a podium placement, especially like you mentioned before, placing top eight out of 60 teams is incredible. And you should be proud of that. Heck, even finishing the top 30 is a huge accomplishment and you fought your way to it. So again, it is nothing to feel sad about. Sure, you can't win them all, but remember, there is always next low ink. But I do want to take word from Pop Gun that you should not be only hoping to win low ink. Please play another tournament to get yourself banned somewhere else. Please. Obviously, you want to. That's what my team did. So we hoped for. And we yeah. did. Actually, uh -oh. you probably hope to not get low ink banned so that you have a tournament to play uh, every Saturday. Okay, well, I'm sorry, every month. <laughs> I guess. Uh, <laughs> you also have weeklies, you have proving you grounds, you, you know. Yeah, so many... that's if you have a schedule. Uh, well, okay. All right. You know, you haven't come back uh, for everything, and I can't, so I can't I buy your back. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but uh, we are looking at, uh, looks like we're the next match we're going to be seeing is going to be against Alliance Moon and Matter of Opinion. Once again, the update from that bracket, as um, Corona was mentioning, it is a complete 2-0 on the first round up. Matter of Opinion taking that 2-0. Alliance Moon versus Matter of Opinion now. Both teams getting that solid 2-0, looking to further this into a chant grand finals. Now, this will be a best of three. So, this could be over quickly. This could take the full time. But both of these teams are wasting no time at getting ready. <laughs> That's for sure. We, go, we just jumped right into it. Like, boom, boom, we're in. I'm not going to lie. I like these, uh, these names on Alliance Moon. They're straight and to the point. Uh, shark. I like sharks. Thank you. If you take any way, anything away from this broadcast, take away Corona like sharks. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Those are sharks are pretty cool. Um, all right, we got Rainmaker Humpback, as you can see. So we're still in a best of three situation. And uh, Rainmaker Humpback Pump Track, one of my favorites. Again, I'm a brush player. I kind of gotta like it. But... Slashers like it too here. Rainmaker Humpback Pump Track is going to be our first map here. 
Rainmaker Humpback Pump Track. We've seen it from time and time again. This map mode has been the team, uh, many teams' death sentence. Uh, or should I say splat sentence when it comes down to it, oh, being able me. to just push forward with any kind of vac cheese, crack and cheese, or just pure aggression overall. But let's not debate on what's going to happen any longer. Let's go right into it as both these teams are pulling out the stops. Look at these cops rolling out Squelcher on both sides. What an interesting weapon to pull out. Do you see a stamper? We do see a carbon. I mean, what, this, these lineups are incredible. I love these these weapon lineups. They're quite interesting, but in, in, in the end, I think at least for this map, they just work. Like you can play around these really well and um, it's looking like a bloodbath here. Shark, unfortunately going down. Come on, man, I like sharks. So you can't go down. I'm just kidding here. Bro over here, I thought they had it there. Unfortunately, locks, lock, hopefully I'm saying that right, gets the kill there. Unfortunately going down, it is a bloodbath here, Cactus. And uh, now a little neutral. Absolutely a strong hold right now. Neither team has picked up the Rainmaker and we've been in here for the first almost full minute. But now, as I say, two team, two players on side of Alliance Moon going down. It's going to be a matter of opinion going straight for this first checkpoint. Duka tries to stop it. It's going to get a checkpoint though and get the player after the point. But with the aggression being held by matter of opinion trying to hold this pop the remaining players of alliance moon are going to fight to hold it and force the members of matter of opinion to hold back in mid back is ready cooler is popped out and this is alliance moon's attempt to push back and get back mid control indeed here we go oh sneaky he is so sneaky there with the ink Zuka. unfortunately wolf is trying to be sneaky here too but no way jose they do not get it there unfortunately resetting to the start but uh, I like that Zuka play from the, the uh, roller there. Who goes there? That is what, uh, what Alliance Moon is asking right there. Who goes there? Now, one down, unfortunately. They're, one of their Zuka players are down, but uh, Ace has something up their sleeve. Boom! Getting that, uh, I should say, the back there. Getting another one before going down. That is three down. Here we go. And uh, it looks like it might be in the hands of Alliance Moon. Oh, I'm just kidding. Wow. Matter of opinion, pulling out the quick stop. Try to stop that Rainmaker. Although they go down, it was not with that a great hold. Although Alliance Moon not letting that stop them. Being able to one, get out the carpet from being sneaky. Two, get the checkpoint. And three, try to fight off with this one player. Wolfie. Oh my goodness. Gets a quad and the wipeout to solidify it. And that's going to be the safety for Matter of Opinion. Getting that Rainmaker out of there as they hold that one point lead. Wow, they are them. That is crazy, but a trade getting the Rainmaker there. We got another back online for the side of Matter of Opinion, and uh, Ace is having to stay back there. I'm just kidding. They are, Zo or they are, wow. Oh my goodness. Ace is taking all the words I just said and saying, no, wrong. Get out of here. Getting two there with a nice zip caster and showing that the, what the special actually works, which is something I didn't know. Absolutely, if played correctly, using proper techniques, Zipcaster can be extremely deadly. But here goes the, the Jet, looking to find a pick. Can it find one? It's looking for some help. Yes, it will get there. Getting rid of the Slosher, as now the remaining members of Alliance Moon have to try to back up for space. Let Matter of Opinion kind of have it just a little bit. Ski on the Carbon, trying to find a pick on the side. They will be unsuccessful there, and just going to have to try to get paint for that Zuka. It is almost ready, and we could see some excellent Zuka shots coming out here to try to further, but no! Instead, they will opt to pick up the Rainmaker, move forward with this, as they did have one player down of Alliance Moon. Interesting, yeah. Zuka being pretty imperative for this meta. I'm, I'm confused why they picked it up, but... And nonetheless, they do get to the 53 uh, right there, so that's, I guess that's pretty good. Giving them a little bit more of a lead, but unfortunately, giving it right back to Alliance Moon here, which they could definitely do something. Look at how much space they got. And uh, I'm just kidding. Here comes the Jet. Two down on the play. That looks like a double, unfortunately. And they are getting locked into a corner here. Not much to do, but not much pressure right now. You know, I hope I saw that correctly, but I, I have to see the replay of it. But it looked like the mm -hmm. Ink Zuka of a live moon took out the Ink Jet, which was an incredible play, oh. and that was what I saw. Again, yeah, like be. you said, 53 points. It could be winnable, but it is not solidified. I mean, as we see here, the players going down of Alliance Moon, this little push that they thought they were going to have is not going to happen. The last player opting to jump out, and here goes Matter of Opinions. Push once more, looking at the last 30 seconds of this match. Yeah, 
if I'm matter of opinion, I'm stalling until we get some specials here. Because we've got none. And unfortunately, one of my Zookas are now down, and the other Zooka is holding this Rainmaker for whatever reason. Uh, I'd like to see, I would have loved to see if this Jet Sculpture is holding it, but nonetheless, oh, this is not a good position to die there. And um, while two are down on the side of Alliance Moon, this is a, a corner that they wish not to throw that to because it could easily be a lead here. They have to try to go for Whoa! it. Zuka gets two, but the Rainmaker was blown up by Man of Opinion. They opted to go for the pick then, rather than get the Rainmaker oh, pop because they didn't have the player advantage. And unfortunately, that's going to be game number one going to Matter of Opinion. What a play. I mean, that 3K was very skillful. That was very impressive. But sometimes you've got to go for the least impressive play, and that's pop the Rainmaker. Absolutely, and you know, like you mentioned, I mean, beautiful picks by the Zuka. The frame one dome pick of them was incredible. That double, I hope it was worth the Twitter points. But unfortunately, <laughs> that's going to be game one, not in your favor. And they're going to have to hope they can try to turn things around as we are now at game point for Matter of Opinion. Yeah, it's it's so weird to say cactus because <laughs> I'm used to like five, that's a five, seven, nine, etc. You know, we got <laughs> Moody, those are nines. Oh yeah, we played one match, we're at match point. Get ready. Uh, but nonetheless, Clamblitz, Inkblot, as you all should know, I like this map. This map's great. But uh, this is going to be our second map and could be the last one here as a matter of opinion as match point. They're going to hope to hold it very strong. I mean, we saw some incredible plays overall from both sides in that last game, very back and forth. And this game has the potential to have that. We did see a little bit before when we came back from our break of uh, those previous teams of Calamity at Forge and Neo and one other. We did see a very close back and forth game there, but... We could only hope to see if it's going to be just like that clan but so again like we saw with the previous set if you're mm. not holding strong and you don't have a quick movable comp you might be in for a dangerous time now so far we have seen both these teams do run a very adjustable and flexible comp to move forward wherever they need it to but it depends comes yeah. down to which team can do it best with the weapon selection they have and that's true i mean looking here they have some signature players i believe locks lock was playing really well uh, there, and I I cannot miss that they do have a prized possession of many people in this chat, in this platoon community, a top 10 X-Rank battle, but I'm going to tell you now, Cactus, this is not X-Rank. This is real ladder. Mm. It's much different, so you got to play as a team here, and Alliance Moon are going to have to win this next one to uh, stay in here. Yeah, absolutely. A team coordination is is what it comes down to you need to have the coordination overall when it comes to taking your fights when it comes to your specials and both of these teams are gonna have to hope they can pull out all the stops or else better opinion hoping to take it home uh, alliance moon hoping to take this to a game three here are the weapon selections we are seeing wiper come out on both sides the jet scorcher does it get swapped out for ballpoint on alliance moon with matter of opinion sticking with the custom jet squelcher with rain versus vac so we are already seeing great comp switch ups some that are very movable very quick very fast you know i actually think that's the right pick for both teams because uh when we're looking at matter of opinion they have three very aggressive weapons while jet can kind of sit back and keep them alive but on the other hand alliance moon here has an end zap which can be aggressive but at the end of the day he's trying to get tactical here but two down on the side of matter of opinion and uh they do not care looking back here they're trying to get something done i believe with that um wiper there i would almost got that name wrong but uh nothing really happening here cactus so they're kind of stuck in mid yeah, you know, it is definitely a bit of a stalemate, as now we are seeing the Alliance Moon Dad kind of have to give up that mid space because of the special usage coming out of Alliance Moon, which is proper to try to stay alive, keep your players alive and ready to go. We see Mookie here doing a great job of picking out a player, but the ball point called them out and saw them immediately getting one player down. It's going to be two players down now as the brush has a couple behind, gets one, and that's going to be all it gets. It's just the Wiper player alive. They're going to go in here and try to score his power claim. They will. 
score another one. Why not? 60 points on the board for Alliance Mood and a couple more just to follow through. Wow, that's a good start and really good coordination. Can sh if Shark gets something here, that'd be crazy. Oh, they're definitely getting something here. What? You know, smart oh, play. Man. I give them props. They were probably called out at the last second and it yeah. is scary to try to go through the bats there at the very end to try to hold it together. Smart play. 45 is a huge lead to have. But with three minutes left, anything can happen for a matter of opinion. That's very true. Um, I did like that bats play, though. They could have gotten a few more in there, but nonetheless, it could have been a death there. So we'll never know, Cactus. We'll never know. But what we know now is that Azuka is out and trying to get um, this ball here. She's trying to get some of it. But you know who else is getting some? Ace. He's got an ace. Up. They got an ace up their sleeve and get the pick there. Very nice. And uh, boom. Get another one there. No more jet for you. Oh, but here we go. Three players down on the side of Alliance Moon. It is now to the, just the ball point to hold it away. Oh, Can they try to find any point to sneak in? And it looks like Wolf might try to come in from the bad side of things. No. Pulled out on the side. Can't wow. pull out. And the, <laughs> the rules have reversed. Zuka comes out to try to see if they get another player. It's going to be unsuccessful, although they will follow it up with a great pick on the wiper get called out though as well on that wall it is now trade for trade in the middle of the map two minutes to go and it's a matter of opinion with some great clam economy what a save by alliance moon there but we need matter of opinion to get some kills and they gotta realize after that fail of a push that their ball point on the side of alliance moon is really the prize possession here and if they go down they can push this but from now on, boom, Ace gets another pick. Really been playing really well today, but two and two, they're gonna try and get a score here. But again, like I said, this stinking ball point is still alive and getting a kill on the jet. Absolutely, the pick's going through. It's gonna be two players down the side of Alliance Moon. Matter of opinion now popping the jet to see if they can further this push. They will get another beautiful Zuka pick, and this might be the push that they are looking for to try to go in with this, but no, the pick goes through. It is now a 3v4, 2v2. Full power clamps going. It is just the stamp right. popping the stamp. Can they find it? They get one. They can't find any more. They have to jump out. Can they get out in time? No yes, way. they will. That was a push, but it might be the only one they get in as we're only a minute left in the game. And they have, I don't believe, any extra power clamps on the map ready to go. That was needed, though, Cactus. I, I believe these guys now realize, or they had to realize, they had to just send it. We, we got we got to stop standing around just just oh no i might die here just send it get it in get the, the 60 that we have here and regroup after most of our team probably dies here but now we got 40 seconds here they have a power plant and they have a chance here a chance they do using their resources to try to get a couple picks the bomb gets a beautiful double wow. what a smart play alliance moon two members down but they had cooler so they're back like nothing ever happened Although, matter of opinion, took some space. Last 20 seconds of the game and potential 20 seconds of overtime. If they can hold this space, build up specials, and try to make something happen. Indeed, doing some quick maths, my friends. They need six clams and a power clam in to get the lead. But doing some more maths, that is two down for matters of opinion. And uh, they have 20 seconds on the clock right now to get something in. They got a hold and they can get a pick and get a jump in. Wolfie okay. gets one, but they oh. can pick on the side. The jump's not possible. The last 10 seconds of overtime, counting down. Zuka comes out. It's not enough Five, time. Four, They're forced three, in mid, two, and that's going to be one. the game. That's the game. Alliance Moon tying things up, bringing it to a game number three. Indeed, and that's what the viewers and us want to see a game three nonetheless, but uh, I must say that I, I did like matter of opinions final push there like I said you just kind of got to get in there and uh, Get something rolling because throughout the whole match I believe it was about three and thirty three minutes and thirty seconds into the match They really had nothing they had well they had a hundred on the board and uh, Nothing really going they just needed to send it and that's something I saw during their first push They just would not send it Sometimes you just gotta send it. That's what I've learned. Yeah, and send it, both these teams are gonna have to do. This is now their last game, their last opportunity to secure a spot in for Grand Finals. They give you all an update of how the other side of this bracket is looking. Miss Q takes the set. 
2 oh. oh over Velvet Sky. Velvet Sky will be competing for the third place match and the third place placement as Miss Q right now is sitting, waiting for one of these two teams to join them in grand finals of the first ever Ladder Inc. Yep, but just like any other... Well, I should say, we. this is only the first one, technically, sorry, but uh, it's just like any other Grand Finals, they are currently waiting, so they will be kind of rusting up a little bit there, only for probably five minutes here as we have a Game 3 here, but um, nonetheless, they are just sitting, waiting right now, Miss Q looking to see, and uh, just like you said, Cactus, best of five, very important, so three wins instead of two in our Grand Finals. That's what they're going to be hoping to compete for and get that sweet, uh -huh. sweet Sendu badge and the ban from Loink. But uh, they have to beat this game first. I'm going to put an asterisk there because that is unfortunately, Cactus, incorrect. They will not be getting banned be oh. uh, during this one iteration. So, uh, for all you out there, my yes, it is great to win this. And technically speaking, you have, you have the only badge that you won, the only ladder ink. Uh, there's another asterisk there. There could be it. But anyway, you know what I mean. You <laughs> won a, a very big ladder rink, which we hope never happens again, you know? Uh, but it is to know that you will not be banned from low ink. Um, pop gun or whatnot, go in my DMs if I'm wrong. Because that's a big fact. You're like, uh, uh, Corona? That's wrong. You're wrong. No, I'm just kidding. But anyway, going into our game three, enough dilly dally. Let's get it right here. I'm loving these comps. Ooh, I love the pick of the rapid, uh, no, regular rapid, or regular blast, you know, rapid blast of deco? Blast they of deco? got something. They, they have a, a, a beautiful blast <laughs> with an inkjet, and it's gonna be on the splat zones on Mahi Mahi. What a game in that mode to finish on. A beautiful pick going down already for Alliance Moon. It is now Ooh. a 2v1 on the side, but Matter of Opinion still has control of the zone. Mookie is doing a great job, Cactus. I, I don't know how they didn't realize that uh, Mookie was the only one left alive. Unfortunate that they did lose their tacticaler, but nonetheless, uh, they could have been on this uh, their their side a lot longer. But nonetheless, we taken Alliance Moon is in control here, but the control of Matter of Opinion and their specials are coming out now. Absolutely. There goes a beautiful Zuka coming out of Alliance Moon, though, to try to stall this push, but it's not going to be enough. Matter of Opinion now claiming it once more to get rid of this penalty and form a couple more. Wolfie, oh, wow. beautiful double, securing the zone once again to hold it even stronger. Now they're going to have to see if they can hold it until Alliance Moon has their members back and specials online. Zuka for Zuka, <laughs> trade for trade. Amazing oh, picks man. there. Both of those shots. Lead will switch over to Matter of Opinion. The squads are trying to get the jet. They won't be able to. Who is coming up for Alliance Moon? And this is going to be a fight to control the zone. Yeah, but uh, Sim here over here uh, has that... Uh back we, we don't usually see it much but they realize it gets the line marker kill well basically gets it gets 30 damage on their line marker wow what a great play but this roller is trying to get something done and something done indeed gold dini getting uh three total for the team um i should say wrapping it up so the team could get three in total and control of the the zone here they're gonna have to try to hold it for a little bit longer. We see these players kind of scattered on the map for Alliance Moon. They have to try to focus a lot of their aggression forward as the members of Matter of Pain try to rush in. Two players down, as I say it, it happens. Here comes the cooler. The lead is gonna flip and it's gonna be Alliance Moon hoping to keep securing this. We have a stagger now from Matter of Opinion on the map. The jet gets popped, the jet gets picked. 20 ticks to go. Zuka comes out and gets another. It's a chip uh -oh. zap. Matter of Opinion, they are getting wiped out. Ruh -roh. That is looking not that good and that was a wipe there at the most unfortunate moment. And uh, yeah, they're not gonna be able to get out of spawn here on Mahi, Mahi Resort in our Semi-finals, I almost called it the quarterfinals here, Cactus, but semi-finals here, congratulations, Alliance Moon. We can say they made the reverse sweep here because we have a, a, a best of three here, but um, nonetheless, Alliance Moon, two. Matter of opinion, one, but still, both teams really doing a great job, and uh, I'm going to be real honest, that was a great match.
that was incredible. Both teams pulling out all the stops to try to flip those zones, pulling out the VAC, the Zuka shots. The Zuka trade was quite honestly pretty incredible. Um, as now both these teams move on to their respective placement fights, we're going to see Alliance Moon in our grand finals. In matter of opinion, we'll fight Velvet Sky down mm -hmm. in the third place match. Indeed, nonetheless, I mean, uh, top four is the worst these two teams could have done. So, nonetheless, Matter of Opinion showed a great outing against Alliance Moon, which was the number two seed coming into this. I believe also being the other team to not lose a set going 5-0 and there um, with a minimum of five games played. So, they are a very scary team and Matter of Opinion got a game off of them. So, very important, but uh, nonetheless, we are going to be going to our Grand Finals. Grand Finals, Miss Q versus Alliance Moon. Miss Q not dropping a single game as of yet during this bracket segment of Ladder Inc. They so far have two owed, uh, two owed Royal Succulents. They two owed Velvet Sky. And they're uh -huh. looking to probably see if they can continue this train forward, hoping for us 3-0 because we are going to a best of five for this Grand Final. So it won't be quick. It won't be be well it could be if the, all of a sudden it's very dominant on one side but it won't be as quick as a best of three we have an extra two games of opportunity for one of these teams to pull it back if need be yes indeed and uh remember i that you can predict for our grand finals who's taking the dub um don't forget to do that it's very important to gamble your channel points uh in this community Nonetheless, um, we are getting it all straight and ready to go. We got Miss Q, which we've seen on stream before, and Alliance Moon, which you just saw on stream. And then we're going to be starting on Splat Zones on Mako Mart, Mako Mart, whatever you call it. They're going to be playing on that map. And I will like to follow that up with mentioning that this is Counterpicks. So teams Correct. will have to choose from a set map list that were put together by the wonderful TOs here at IPL. So they can try to fight their way. Uh, if they do, they lose matches. Hopefully, picking a good one to fight back. Now, we in classic Lowing fashion, we do have two teams that have a roster of five. And as we've known from Lowing history, that a team of only four has not won in a quite a while. It has usually been a team of five or more. So both these teams obviously looking to secure this full win on both of their respective sides. Alliance Moon coming in as the number two seed, Miss Q coming in at the number four seed. And we have seen the, the upsets earlier in the tournament. So it's mm. only a matter of time to see what these teams will bring out, comps they are going to put out, and who will be your Ladder Inc. champions. In Indeed here, I believe we are uh, about to get started here real soon, but while we're waiting, um, I'm trying to think what we saw. I, I really liked what we saw at the end there with uh, Alliance Moon where they brought out that jet. I really think they work well uh, around it. Yes, they could be playing more, maybe more aggressive back lines or mid lines, I guess you could say in the uh, ballpoint or whatnot. but. Uh, I really do think that including the spot zones, uh, Michael Mark, Make a Mark, whatever you want to call it, um, map, Jet, Jet's actually not that bad. The, the Storm one, nonetheless. Absolutely. For, for this map mode, we, we that would be a great use. Uh, I mean, both these teams having an option for you going with a slosher for ledges on Mako Mart if they're able mm -hmm. to hold some great aggression. If they want to be able to camp some ledges and force teams to focus towards or funnel through one entranceway when it comes back on the defensive side. So a lot of opportunities, a lot of good options to choose for weapons for both of these teams. Indeed, they also could go for a brush, but they won't because... Uh... That's that's not cool. But anyway, uh, yeah, Slosher, I believe somebody on Miss Q, I'm already forgetting, you know, bad memory here, but uh, I believe someone was playing a Slosher at some point, but um, they, they could prove me wrong here, but we are about to start um, real quick, and I believe I want to say, what was, Miss Q was playing Ballpoint, right, Cactus? I believe they were. I believe so, but they did also play the Jet Squad train the some previous oh, games as well. So we could see either used here. 
that would really hold a good amount of space, whether that's like you mentioned with the rain, we could maybe see Vac use side Vac with a couple bombs on the zone, it could flip that over on their side. Uh, but no more speculating. We're about to find out as we head into yeah. game number one, grand finals of the first Ooh. ladder rank. First and only ladder rank, put that in there. Boom. Pencil. Oh yeah, they were playing, what? Wait, is that Double. Goldini? I think Goldini was playing roller last, ro sorry, roller car last roller. round. Carbon or roller, right? Wow. I mean, we are seeing Pencil out on both sides. We do see um i think that's ice on the side of miss q pulling out the splash again we do see the slosher wiper coming out on the side of alliance moon but it's going to be on miss q taking advantage so far getting those picks zuka's both coming out to try oh. to get these picks. specials for specials on the field it is trades for trades coolest top for miss q and alliance moon is going to get that zone flip Oh my goodness, what a play there by Locked Lock. But JoJo and friends are really getting something done here, getting that zone back and almost done with the penalty. But they realize that Goldini is just stuck here in a corner and uh, having them jump up there. But unfortunately, one of their V-Shot players down for the count. And JoJo is going to just be a menace here, keeping Goldini from having any range and just distracting them, uh, giving a lot of time to miscue. Here's OT oh <laughs> on the side! OT oh, incredible wow. honey. Unfortunately, that wasn't able to find them a pick. Never mind. It's fine. I'll speak again. It was able to get one to come out and get that beautiful pick on the side with only 30 ticks to go, Corona. This is looking dominant for Miss Q right now. Oh my goodness, it is looking very dominant, but we're we're gonna curse this again because oh my goodness, it's another kill. Ace getting a very important kill while Sonny somehow it's out alive, but, but if we're looking at here, Cactus, yeah, did Alliance Moon get the zone? Of course, but look at all this pain. Miskyu gets it right back because they just have this pain control. They do, and I mean, it's incredible. Zuka's going to come out, try to get a pick on Sunny. He's going to get a pick on one other player instead. Uh, Locks Lock is doing an excellent job trying to fight off the slosher and pinch it with the pencil. Is it going to be able to? Yes, they will. That's going to be a trade-off now on the field with it being flipped over back to Alliance Moon. The penalty points will count down, but here comes the crab. The cooler's popped out, gets one. It's looking for two. It's going to get two. And now there's only two players remaining on Alliance Moon as Azuka oh, comes man. out to try to force him back. Yeah, but Jo- Oh, I thought Jojo had the play where they dodged that first one, but unfortunately getting destroyed there on that stack there. But uh, Alliance Moon has literally basically no points here, but that is also meaning they have no penalty. Getting a good kill there, I believe, on Jojo once again in the slot here. And Goldini is keeping it alive here, while I think Locks Lock getting a lot of pressure there on Sunny, which is giving them a lot of points here. You know, they're gonna really have to hope for these picks on the side. I mean, right now they need to ride its momentum, but the crab's gonna get popped up, but destroyed by Azuka shot! And that's gonna be Ace rushing in to try to get a pick on the slosher. They're gonna go over and over extension slightly to try to put more pressure. The points are counting down. We're gonna see, oh, no. unfortunately, no trade as Jojo clutches up, pops the tri strike to try to get that zone cap over with the Zuka as well, coming up from Oats. And it's gonna be the zone flip. Yeah, I talked about JoJo getting destroyed there, but I'm just going to be honest, that was a very big clutch of getting an incredible important kill and throwing those twice strikes to get that zone back, giving a penalty to Alliance Moon. That was very much needed, and JoJo here, really trying to get something on the stack, which again, we know, Slasher is very good at what they do here, but Locks Lock, trying to get something done, but no, denied on the play. Really nice, and uh, I think the zone is going to be stalemated here as a Trizuga kill comes out. A beautiful pick, it will go down. Two players down for Alliance Moon as Miss Q is full members up. Godini popping the cooler, getting enough paint just for that on the side. They're gonna have some players jump in on the side, try to get that cooler. If they can follow through with the Zuka for some picks, the Slosher will go down. They're looking for another, they will find a second. They're gonna try to cap the zone as the other Zuka is popped to try to find one more, but no, no more picks will get pulled out for Alliance Moon. They're only 10 points and a couple of penalties away from getting the zone back. They just have to try to hold. Yeah, but that pencil player is now down. They have no range. They really got to keep up the play. Whoever gets killed next, basically, is going to be that clutch factor here. And keeping it alive. But look at, look at this teamwork here. That is three on the play. Three down for Lions Moon. 
And another capture, and the penalty goes basically right back to where it was. 39 for Lions Moon, while 25 remaining on the total clock. 20 seconds remain in this game, but it could be less if Miss Q gets the zone held a little bit longer, but the stamp from Alliance Moon will help with that. Securing it again. 10 seconds to go. Alliance Moon in favor of zone, mm -hmm. but not the player advantage. Here comes the Zuka. Uh -oh. Can they cap this? Can they get the pick to try to finish it off? And they have to try to hold the zone, but it's not enough time. The strikes come out. They flip the zone. Miss Q to get game number one. I gotta give, I mean, all of Miss Q played exceptionally well here, but if you saw Oats at the last 10, 15 seconds of the match, and they were keeping Goldini in check. Goldini was looking straight forward at zone and back because they knew Oats was over there and got, Oats got a very important kill, which led the rest of uh, Miss Q to get that zone of Trizuka, I should say Tri-Strike, etc. there in the end. So. That was a team play indeed. So, congrats for Miss Q getting the first game here of our grand finals. But, like Cactus, you said uh, before our match, we are in counter picks. So, we will get the counter picks soon. Absolutely. It is going to be uh, in favor for Alliance Moon to pick a map mode combination from the map pool that we have selected to hopefully take a win on some common known turf. Uh, and it looks like we are going to be finalizing some of these players in for their choosing, and their choosing is going to come down to Rainmaker, Undertow Spillway. Interesting. Um, I, I think, th I mean, this is really interesting because of the last match we saw Rainmaker for Alliance uh, Moon here. They kind of stalemated the whole time. I really didn't get that much they, they weren't dominant, is what I'm trying to kind of say here, Cactus. And while I think Undertow, personally for me, you could think differently, but I think it's a better map overall. Um, the Rainmaker in general just, from what we've seen, didn't feel like a dominant win for Alliance Moon. So, interesting pick on my part. Absolutely. I mean, it does have the ability to very quickly snowball, and I wonder if that's yeah. what Alliance Moon is hoping for, right? They're hoping to try to get some kind of snowball going where they can get a huge amount of points with a big enough lead to hold it for the entire game. Now, it's going to be obviously up to Alliance Moon if they're going to go for that first pop, first shoot score, or mm -hmm. if they're going to try to play it a little bit slower, try to get that first checkpoint when they can, maybe give Miss Q the opportunity to think that they're going to have the option to have a lead of their own and then take it right back. I mean, anything can happen, and we're going to see these comps come out. We're seeing quite hmm. the change up on both sides. Yeah, if they if they were looking for a insta pop on the side of Alliance Moon, they're not getting it. So I'm, I'm going to be real honest with you. I'll put uh, put a little some coins on the line. Oh, never mind. I just I lied. Two down from the pop, and uh, here comes what we were talking about: Snowball Shark trying to just hit the checkpoint here. And uh, wow, okay. They are talking me wrong here, guys. I said, I said it. The snowball is what they're hoping for, and this is what they're going to try to get. They get one with the Zuka. They're going to get, hopefully, two with the pop, but no, it's not going to be enough. The Vac is here, but it's just the Vac player alive. They're going to try to fight and hold this together, but they're not going to. Miss Q caught off that early aggression that they had, and now it is in Miss Q's favor as they pick up the Rainmaker, have the cooler online, and look to ha make a push of their own. Yeah, indeed, and the questions we're going to be asking, will this backfire? Will... The uh, instant, you know, push here. Look at this. Locked Locks is trying to just keep this side that they once had on the other side in check. But uh, Sunny is going to indeed put it up, and that's three down for Alliance Moon. Very troubling. But uh, this, this is going to pop a little late because Sunny is the only one trying to in, uh, actively pop it. So, how many points will they get? Will be very important. I mean, so far, down to 36, cooler is going to be popped, but it's not going to be gotten in time by that Rain Mirror because, I mean, if we know the timing of these connections when it comes to getting that cooler, that was not enough time. But 29 is a massive push and a point lead. And Alliance Moon has to bring it all the way over from their spawn, practically, to this push side on the, on the left hand uh, of the map. It's going to be all of these stops being pulled out for Alliance Moon as the back comes out trying to push it forward. Can they get the oh. lead? Hit? Yes, they will! Uh, you know, they just 
took everything I was about to say and threw it out the window, smashing all the glass in the house there. I was about to say, I think these teams need to be a little bit more patient here. As we saw that how Miscu got to 29 was, they were a little impatient on how they got it. I mean, if they could have waited a little bit, maybe they could have gotten more, but wow. Uh, Alliance Moon there just ran with it and just somehow got a lead there. So took, took everything I said and threw it out the window there. But now Sunny and crew, uh, Miscu are telling them that they might get it back here. They're doing the no same way. thing here. No way. Wow. <laughs> Oh my You're goodness. Barely alive. I was gonna comment that both these teams have yet to just let them make a reset. They have used their pure aggression to just keep going forward and try to get a lead back and forth, and that once again they will. The jump's coming in. Sunny goes in and has to run away to not die. The cooler is popped in the worst position, probably for Miss Q with no players able to grab it. Alliance uh, Moon, though, not being able to get any value out of that zip caster. This was a massive push, and it is now the first Rainmaker, Rainmaker reset in the game with two minutes left on the clock. You could say it's the first Rainmaker uh, reset in the history of Alliance Moon versus Miscu. Uh, Gil of this guy. Anyway, now <laughs> in the hands, Alliance Moon needs to make a comeback, and they're looking like going right. They, they need to go fast right if they're doing it, but uh, no, cut off by the day. But that's three down here, folks. And Ballpoint, which has the most range, if you can stop him here, which it does, is the only one alive. So Lock, Lock, uh, Lock, Lock, who have been getting their name wrong the whole time, is uh, putting some great pressure here. Zuka out. This is gonna. This has to be a lot of uh, effect, but no. And now it's basically just stuck in this one. It is, right, and they're going to have to try to hold it if they a little bit can, oh but the player from Alliance, uh, Alliance would try to rush it, but it was not enough time. They got called out because all the players were there to c just get it out of the way. Alliance Moon now having to fight for some pressure and fight for some space. A minute to go on the clock. They have Vac ready, and they're going to try to put more pressure. Well, will come out from JoJo as they try to apply some spacious to try to get this Rainmaker reset a little bit faster. It will go through, but they're going to go one player down. Cooler is popped for Alliance Moon, and we're going to go into the last minute of the game. All specials are being popped, and this Rainmaker is going to try to look to see if they can move forward for lead swap, and it might happen. Uh, no. <laughs> Sunny <laughs> denies it. Uh, again, and that's where I think Patience would have uh, been the key, but and goodness, what a very important kill there. As now two go down, very important impact practice and Oates is going on the 1v1. Will they clutch K Kind? Did not get it, but JoJo saves the day. Um, and now it, another reset. Another day, another reset. With 20 seconds left to go and overtime for as long as they can hold that Rainmaker, it is in Miss Q's favor to try to hold as much aggression as they can to not let Alliance move push anymore. But with two specials ready, they might have an answer. Rainmaker's gonna have to force to get picked up. Three specials online. Here they go. Specials coming out. Can they get JoJo? Yes, they will. But the whale is popped to put more pressure on the side. And we are heading into overtime as the inkjet comes out. Can they oh, stop? No. It's pop. The Rainmaker's still alive, oh. but it's not enough. The zap rushes on in. The inkjet, some for some reason, lags away to its wrist while point. And Miss Q takes game number two, putting that at game point. Very interesting a shark to kind of move forward and not like stay in the back there. Um nonetheless, it was gonna be very tricky for Alliance and me to get something done there. And uh, Oats and the folks at a line, or I should say miscue, um, that was indeed a miscue of a play there. Uh, their whole team playing out of their minds here. 2-0 as <sighs> we're going to everybody's favorite counter pick. Cactus, would you like to say it? Because everybody knows what it is already. We're going to Tower of Control on Ink Blonde Art Academy. Who could have thought about that? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm not gonna lie. This map, this map's fun though. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Listen, fun. it leads for some amazing opportunities, and it can be a pretty, uh, a, a pretty fast-paced, quote-unquote, uh, game mode on this map with just the path the tower goes. You have so many opportunities to hold so much, um, space Everything. in the map, just everywhere you go. I mean, it's quite, quite the combination. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Um. I did want to say while we're waiting here that uh, I, I say that it's everybody's favorite map because I believe about a year ago I was commentating for the great folks at Dabble Productions and I think it was like a Squid Junction or something. They tallied that Tower Control Inkbot was counterpicked 
29 times in the total tournament. 29 times! That's crazy. So it's, it's everybody's favorite map, apparently, because that was just ridiculous to me. Uh, but nonetheless, I, I'm very interested to see what aligns Moon switches for this, because I feel like they've realized they're 2 and 0, they're down 0 2, I should say, in their heads, right? And it's looking like an 0-3, right? Because if you have that, if you're thinking of that mental, it's going to be really tough to come back from it. But nonetheless, I, I think they're thinking of switching something. And we're going to see Cactus in a second, if I was right. If I... Yeah, I mean, here we go. Game point for Miss Q, and they take it all. We see uh, the... Uh, uh... Rapid Blast, I believe that is a full Rapid Blast of Deco, the full range one that has the, all the stops coming out with the whale. We are seeing uh, the Charger come out from Sunny. So, I mean, I, I, I mean great pick. It, there's potential for it to happen. If Sunny hits these shots, it's going to be a dangerous time for Alliance Moon. Indeed, and honestly, it, it makes this Rapid Blast or Pro Deco question mark very scared because, well, they thought they'd probably have more range or equal range of some sort, and uh, that's not the case. No, absolutely. And right off the bat, we're going to see some great trades going off in mid as both these teams look to see who's going to push the tower first. And it's going to be Alliance Moon opting for that one point mini uh, mini meme lead uh, as they're going to get more players down on the side of Miss Q. And now we're going to start seeing an official push here to the first checkpoint. And I'm really liking what Alliance Moon is doing here. They're very aggressive, and that's something. They really need to be if they're 0-2 down. But, I mean, if you think about it, usually my, my mental would be down the drain right now, but they are playing like they are high 0-0 zero, zero here, or even more if they're winning. But nonetheless, they get to this checkpoint here. Will they get it farther? I don't think they realize there's Oz Ice. Uh, they are, I almost called it Oz Ice Cream, but they do, I believe. Am I right? They do not. I'm sorry. I thought they get the checkpoint here, but I am indeed wrong. Oz Ice gets that tack out and uh, is looking like another day in the Miss Q's headquarters. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, right away, here we go. The push started off again. The vacuum being popped on tower to hold things more, but the... Oh, the Splatana coming in and swiping away <laughs> so that push is cancelled out. These players of Miss Q are being forced back onto their plaid. Jojo popping the well, seeing if they can go in with it to try to find this pick. They will be able to find one. Can they find another? Spacing out with the wall, being careful not to overextend as Goldini on the blaster is going to try to find a pick if they can. And this is going to be rushed and picked off by Jojo. Indeed, and that was a big three down for Alliance Rogue at one point. But the last guy locks lock, trying to stop that tower. And looky here, Miss Q's on the tower, and they boom got that chuck point number one. And they're fighting very nice. And Bats gets a pick and that, and Bats, and, and oh, nice play by Goldini there, keeping them alive. That's three down, and they're looking for chuck point here, Cactus. But I don't know if they're gonna get it. It doesn't look it. It looks like Alliance Moon was able to put on just enough pressure to stop their push from getting closer to that checkpoint. Look at the picks going off on their end. It's going to be a dangerous situation, but oh, Sunny with the beautiful snipe is now going to keep this push going. Trying to dodge a bomb, trying to dodge a Zuka shot as now they head towards the checkpoint. I was going to say hopefully for that uh, VAT to come out, but the Zuka gets two. Logs lock, it's another, hoping to find one more on Jojo, but Jojo just narrowly able to escape. Indeed, we got two minutes left in our match here, and it's anybody's game. Nobody's gotten through that second checkpoint. But speaking of twos, there are two down for Alliance Moon. And uh, Miskyu is getting a, a lot of, look at this, great push. Oz, Ice, and uh, I believe one other is getting bats right now, and getting a lot of paint. But here comes the Zipcaster, and I believe gets one, and another one. And that's a full team wipe basically delayed for Miss Q. You know, I gotta give props to uh, Miss Q, constantly pushing his tower forward. But it's not enough. You know, they're, they're right there at that second checkpoint to try to get things moving. But Alliance Moon has just been so aggressive with uh, their defense and trying to finally turn into some offense as both teams pop cooler. It's going to be trades going out on the map, but it, more in favor of Miss Q as they're going to get two down for a two for one. Getting one more player down on Miss Q. 
Alliance to Moon trying to hold for one more minute as Azuka comes out. It's going to be a delayed wipe. Somehow one player escaping on Alliance Moon and now they're going to have to set up for defense one more time. Zuka's on hand, ready to go as we head towards this checkpoint for Miss Q once one. again. And another one. Locks Lock gets a nice kill there and Oats is like, I'm out of here. Peace. 30 seconds on the play and Alliance Moon needs a lot of paint here. There comes Tack. Ace needs to get going and get some paint here. They're, I think they're just really scared of this sniper and uh, I'm not gonna lie, I would be too. I mean, I will say, though, they've been doing an excellent job at using mm. Zookas and other resources to get them picked. They Fair focus true. on whenever it's using an inkjet to try to push things forward, but oh no, it's only five seconds left to go. Alliance Moon might be taking this game unless Miss Q can somehow rush the tower and get on top. Oh my goodness. It's a one ball. Oh, oh my, my gosh. gosh. They crushed. Oz Ice is like, I'm here to play. We're here to end this thing. Again, they just need to get the first checkpoint, and uh, they, they put Tack in a weird place, but we're at 56, 55. They, someone needs to get on right now. Oh my! And, and that's the win! What just happened? The Vac shot got a quad, I believe, on Wait, the really? tower. I'm Even so that, confused. It was a full wipeout as every player was rushing the tower. Miss oh Q, my. overtime clutch, and they will be your Ladder Inc. November 2023 champions. What what just happened? Wow. Miss, I mean, yeah, I, I we believe gotta, we have a replay here. Play. I need to we see that. On screen. <laughs> We need to see this replay and how it happened because that was incredible. I know they had back and they shot it directly at the tower. They were able to get one with a direct shot, but was it the remaining players that all staggered onto the tower getting a full wipeout? I I'll hope these rough. players also yeah, clipped it on their end because that was incredible. Here we go. We got the replay on hand. The two seconds remaining here. Ozai's, I mean, that's a question itself. Ozai's getting... Yeah, Ozai's popping off. Okay, trading two, one with the zip and one which is in regular, dancing around the tower, pulling out all the stops. I mean, we saw the cooler come out. We saw one already go down, two jump on the tower. That shot goes through. And I think that finishes off the last two because one died in patch the trade. That's crazy. Wow, um... I like how we're very speechless, but this is a very important moment for uh, the, the stream right now, as we indeed can say, like you just said, Miss Q gets a 3-0. We don't have any, it, it's just a best of five here. So Miss Q gets the W here in our one, our first, I should say, and hopefully only Ladder Inc. here at IPL. Congratulations, and if you're Alliance Moon, I'm so happy to get second place here. Again, these teams do not get banned. I should say Miss Q does not get banned um, from Low Ink, so they can play in future tournaments uh, when we have them. And um, taking a look, I don't think we'll be sticking around for it, but I did want to say in our third place match right now, Matter of Opinion is up against Velvet Sky 2-1. Yeah, Matter of Opinion, hoping to try to uh, bring it home with a 3-0-1 victory, but Velvet Sky aiming to push it back. But for Grand Finals terms, that is going to be your Ladder Inc. November 2023 tournament. Miss Q with a, a beautiful overtime win to finish it off completes that run. And like I mentioned before, the, po the possibility of not dropping a single game in the top eight bracket. Indeed, but speaking of endings, that will be it for us. We did crown a winner, so I'd hope that'd be the end for our stream here. I'd like to uh, first say I'm Corona Beer. You can find me on the Twitter.com at Corona underscore beer. And Cactus, where can we find you? You could find me on the Twitter or x.com at oh, glitchedcactus. No. 
Uh, if you want, I am on Blue Sky. That's a thing. That exists. I didn't get accepted yet. You can find. At, uh, I think I have an invite. I could, I could maybe give it to you. I have to check. I don't know how Blue Sky works. I barely use it enough as it is. <laughs> But you can find me on blue sky at glitch cactus dot blue sky social however that works uh or of course on youtube at glitch cactus or you twitch at glitch cactus one because glitch cactus was taken so that is gonna do it for our ladder inc i also want to give a huge shout out to all of the fantastic tos and staff that helped make this happen i want to give a huge shout out to our behind the scenes camera person Ig Fairer doing a fantastic job getting us those angles, getting us those shots, and making this a reality. So a huge thank mm -hmm. you to everyone that put this together. Our previous commentators, you, Corona, obviously, and the viewers for tuning in thank you. to this lettering.